that this is likely intensifying and we actually did see Ian go through an eye wall replacement cycle earlier tonight and what that does is actually it punches a hole in that eye wall when that eye gets too tight to sustain itself. You start to see these bands file through and replace that eye and now that it is nearly completely encapsulated and has pretty much completed that eye wall replacement we would expect this system to then strengthen. The last advisory actually bumped up the pressure levels with this storm, which actually means that it would be weakening, and that was likely because of that eye wall replacement cycle. Now that it has completed that cycle, I would expect it to strengthen within the next advisory that we do see. The number of lightning strikes we see around that eye solely between that 70 to 80 mark within the past 45 minutes. Expect that number to uptick as we do see this storm strengthen. Winks Live Doppler 3X showing some of those storms with a deviant motion to the west actually pushing through Port Charlotte. We were tracking these earlier for some loose rotation for now all clear. If anything changes, we will be the first to let you know farther to the south Collier County. We're seeing more and more of these isolated cells. These are the ones that we'll have to watch for some loose rotation. We're already seeing a little bit of it with those storms at least high off the surface uh, as they do get close to Winx Live Doppler 3X. We will be able to pinpoint exactly which one of these storms are capable of producing a tornado if any of them were to get warned. For now, though, we are in the all clear. The National Weather Service actually about 15 minutes ago highlighting these cells and highlighting additional thunderstorms rolling off the Atlantic to have that potential to see some rotation over the next few hours. We talk about that front white right quadrant of the storm. As you can see here, the strongest winds, highest storm surge, but additionally that tornado potential possible. That's what we've seen over the past few hours, and it will be maximized over the next few hours as well. Tornado potential at the moment. You can see these light green shadings just loosely encapsulating all of the wink viewing area and especially out there on the east side of the state where we've already had confirmed tornadoes out there east of Lake Okeechobee. For now, we haven't had any confirmed tornadoes here locally. We will see that tornado threat potentially increase or ramp up over the next few hours as this storm does approach us and we stay on that front right quadrant uh, beginning by about 2 to 3 a.m. That maximum tornado threat there and that's why we do indeed have tornado watches in place for all of South Florida. They didn't just put them up for just Southwest Florida. In fact, that tornado watch going as far north as Highlands County. It looks like in this latest update, DeSoto County as well, and that tornado watch con continuing until 5 a.m. And by that point, they will either renew these watches or we will start to see some of the stronger impacts from Ian as it makes its approach. I have more details on the tornado threat. And of course, if anything goes warned, we'll continue to keep you updated here at the Wink Weather Authority. Right, Nash, thank you very much. Um, here is video just coming in the newsroom of the destruction left behind in Cuba. Uh, Ian made landfall in Cuba at 430 Tuesday morning. So just yesterday mm. and look at this wow. and these children there, their homes are flooded. Roofs are ripped. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's all the water that was inundating parts of Cuba. And I just read that um, virtually all the power now has been uh, knocked out offline there in Cuba. Very tough situation for them stranded on the island. And we know so many folks here have ties to that island, many families yeah. there. And the days and months ahead are going to be recovery. Let's get over to Lisa Hudson, who is getting brand new video coming in from Key West showing us the conditions there. Where specifically is that, Lisa? So this is a live cam from the Washington Examiner. It's basically looking out over downtown Key West. We have another cam right here that is right on Front Street, and you can see the water filling up all the way up to the cones right here. It's kind of been a, a slow mover. You can slowly see, I've watched it just over the last 30 minutes or so, and you can slowly see the water rising there. This fence, uh, a lot of people commenting, watching live from other parts of the country, uh, kind of watching this fence here, wondering when that's going to go. Uh, again, the storm, we're starting to see those those wind bands hitting some of the palm trees. Again, this is Front Street in Key West. Here's another look as well. It kind of gives you an overview of the tops of the buildings there. You can see the trees swaying. You can see how much wind is really blowing in that area. Again, we're just starting to see some of the, the bands hit this, this area in, on Front Street here. Again, this Ian making an impact all the way through the state of Florida, guys. That's just the start. We've got to deal with us still here and then the potential crossing over to Lisa. Thank you. And those families down in Key West, they know and understand the drill here. You think back to Hurricane Irma, what they've yeah. had to deal with and the recovery there. I mean, they know how to batten down the hatches <laughs> and then to come back on the other end. I think that's 
Well, if anyone's new to Florida, that's what you'll find with most Floridians is they all know how to come together afterward. And, you know, obviously living in Florida, living in paradise, this is something, unfortunately, yeah. that we have to deal with every now and then. But what I really, what gives me comfort is that when the warnings have started to come out, you saw people go to the store. Your neighbors were preparing, they were getting the water, they were taking this very seriously. So that gives me a little comfort knowing that people are, are taking this seriously. Uh, let's go to Winkter's reporter Annette Montgomery, who is live for us on Fort Myers Beach. Annette, earlier we even saw some of the water start to suck out from the tide there, and it's very windy already where you are. Yeah, Corey, I would say the wind is for sure the major factor right now. Now, this is Zone A, so one of the areas around 9 a.m. that Lee County issued a mandatory evacuation order for. And I can tell you I completely understand why, because I know our meteorologist said this morning the wind is only going to pick up, and look how windy it is. You can see those trees just blowing. You can see that um, flagpole blowing. You can see this down palm. I have to also say, as we've been out here, we've been hearing large bangs, so I don't know if that's things falling, but I can definitely tell you that this wind is so windy, it's actually physically pushing me. Now, another thing to note, I know we said yesterday around 1 p.m. that the gas stations here were boarded up. I can confirm me and my photographer drove from Vanderbilt Beach to this area. All of the gas stations we passed in Fort Myers Beach are not only boarded up, the buildings are not only boarded up, but they do have bags over all of the gas pumps. So getting gas in Fort Myers Beach, I don't know how likely that is because the gas stations we passed have all been boarded up. Now, like I said, this is an area under a mandatory evacuation order, and I can tell why, especially with this wind. It's just very windy. The rain is starting to come down. It wasn't really rainy until just now, but yeah, the rain is now starting to come down. But I would definitely say the biggest, biggest issue right now is definitely this wind. And if it's picking up, it's only a matter of time I can say before things start flying because it is very, very windy, pushing me to a point. And wow. Annette, if we can hang with her for just a second, I wanted to ask her a quick question about her commute over because I believe she was down in Collier County and then worked her way to on Fort Myers Beach. So I'm guessing she went through Hickory Island and Lover's Key. There was a lot of flood mitigation that was done right. on the island. Do we still have a net that I can ask her what her drive over was like? Did you see a ponding or any kind of issues on the roadway on the island already? Yeah, Lindsay, we did. I have to say at certain points we were a little bit concerned because our car did start hydroplaning. The, the tires did start, you know, sliding because of that water. I'm going to have my photographer pan down, but look, you can actually see right now we're seeing ponding right here, and this is this, the rain literally just started and it's already ponding. So I can only imagine with the wind picking up, with the rain picking up, as our meteorologist said, especially with us being on the coast, it's only going to, it's only a matter of time before it gets worse. So that's especially why Lee County officials, you know, try to get people to evacuate. They're asking people to evacuate. I know you all said this morning that people, this is their last minute to get out. I would say this is your last minute on Fort Myers Beach. If, if I were giving my opinion, I would definitely say this is your last minute because this wind is pushing me. We're, we're hydroplaning already on the road, so I can only imagine if the wind picks up, if the rain picks up, how much worse it will be out here. And Annette, hang with us for a second. You're right. It is the last moment. It's it's bad out there. For anyone who's just listening via radio here, uh, when she showed us pan down to her boots, it's not covering, you know, it's not mid-knee at that point. The flooding not too bad. Really, Corey, it seems like it's the wind that we're hearing over her microphone. Yeah, and I was actually just asking Nash what the winds are right now in Fort Myers Beach, around 35 miles per hour, Annette. So that's uh, what you're feeling right now. And unfortunately, it's just going to get worse uh, as the day moves on. So, Annette, stay safe out there. I don't know, it's about to get really wet there as well on Fort Myers Beach. Thanks for bringing that to us live. And it is worth noting the reason that they do these evacuations is partially because of those sustained winds. Once they hit 40, 45 miles an hour, uh, they are going to close bridges. Doesn't mean they put barricades out. That's not safe. But essentially, no one's going to be crossing to help you out, and that's why. Let's go back to that video we were just showing because our crew in Lehigh Acres captured this. This is the National Guard gearing up. Uh, they took this footage right outside of Lehigh Acres Library, and you see those high profile vehicles and that is why they are able to respond so quickly they can move in when a lot of other vehicles cannot and get into high water areas we heard the governor mention early tuesday morning i believe it was 
5,000 Florida Guards men and women already activated and pre-positioned. That is essential. They are already in place. That's why they're at Lehigh Acres Library Inland. So the moment that it is safe to go back out onto the roads, they can do so. But then also another 2,000 Guards men and women from Tennessee, Georgia, and North Carolina. And these are the folks that they are trained to do anything, whether that's go door to door and rescue people if we get to that point, um, to hand out water, blankets, essentials, or to help in shelters. They are all hands on deck. And it's, I think, comforting it's to see that comforting. they are stationed here in Southwest Florida and ready to respond once we get through this. Yeah, and you know, earlier we were talking to officials, uh, even from places like LCEC, they are spreading out. So you have the, the Florida National Guard, uh, LCEC, the local hospitals are gearing up. I'm actually talking to someone on Facebook right now. He is on the hospital team B, ready to go right after the storm passes to make sure the hospital emergency rooms are staffed properly. So yeah. they're getting ready right now. Uh, let's get back over to Weather Authority Meteorologist Casey Sherman giving us another look at this system right now. Yeah, and it is strengthening, unfortunately, but this is as we anticipated across portions of the southern Gulf of Mexico. I want to show you a look at the latest forecast cone. This came out. It's now about 1259. So this came out uh, just about a couple hours ago. If you have not watched us since, we have seen a change in our forecast cone that has brought this now farther to the south and east. That track now for potential landfall from the National Hurricane Center showing that center of circulation with the strongest part of the winds moving through areas of Sanibel, Captiva as we head into this afternoon. This is by 8 p.m. today. It's tracking through portions of northwestern Lee County into the Charlotte Harbor and then out through Punta Gorda as still a major hurricane even as it moves inland. This is going to be a very strong system. This is a dangerous scenario for us and even if it takes a little bit of a wobble off to the west, a little bit of a wobble off to the east, either way you cut it, this is not a good scenario for southwest Florida, but it is one we prepared for. The good thing is about hurricanes, we have days to prepare for it. We see this coming for days and yes, while we have seen these shifts in our models and shifts in Consequently, in our forecasts, uh, these are all possibilities that we have prepared for. This is a fairly reminiscent track of Charlie. Charlie is the line in pink and red behind it. Look at how this lines up with that. And every storm is different. So while the track is very similar, keep in mind this system, it is a whole lot larger. That wind field is a whole lot larger than Charlie's. Charlie, for size reference, you can see that size compared to what we have with Ian right now, but it's currently growing and we are expecting that wind field to expand as it continues that northward track and Irma for reference, uh, which did not make the same kind of trajectory and track uh, as about that kind of size compared to at least where Ian is now, but we'll see if it can get, get to the size of Irma here as it continues over some warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. So with that forecast track that came out at 11 p.m., that update, we'll have another one out at 5 a.m. By the way, we have seen some changes with our storm surge, specifically for Collier County, they have increased it with the more southerly track, and we've said these numbers are subject to change with any kind of forecast track farther to the south. That would mean more storm surge for Collier County as you're closer to then that center of the strongest of the winds. Stronger winds would result in more of a push of water as it kind of backs with more power with those stronger winds. So six to 10 foot storm surge possible for coastal Collier County. Eight to 12 foot storm surge still possible for Charlotte Harbor, out there areas like Captiva, Sanibel, those areas along the Pine Island Sound, Fort Myers Beach, along with the Caloosahatchee River. Here's a closer look at our high tides, and we look at these because high tide is when our water level is at the highest on a, just kind of a normal day. When you factor in storm surge, then that adds to, of course, the high tide plus the storm surge would be that peak storm surge, which is what you just saw in that graphic there, the high tide is baked into that. Unfortunately, our high tides today, they are going to be very close to landfall time. Uh, where we are looking at landfall likely sometime this afternoon. I would say it could be anywhere between about 2 p.m., maybe as early as 1 p.m. through about 5 p.m. today. 
high tides for Charlotte County, Cape Hayes Peninsula, Englewood Beach, and Charlotte Harbor anywhere between about 3, 4, 6 p.m. It's at that point in time and onward that we're going to continue to still see that onshore flow that would be bringing us that peak storm surge which is why they have asked areas in those red shadings there certainly to evacuate. Those mandatory evacuation orders need to be heated in these areas because this is just a worst case scenario for that with high tide occurring at landfall. Traveling farther south into Lee County, those high tides also ranging close to landfall anywhere between about 2, 3, 4, 6 p.m. And notice even 7 p.m., even if it has made landfall at that point in time, even once the storm is lifting northward, the threat of storm surge does not stop. We have projected storm surge, and this is reasonable worst case scenario for those areas in red of nine feet or more, uh, not six to nine feet in orange, three to six feet in yellow, in blue, one to three feet. And if you want to find out exactly what projected storm surge your home, your backyard has, you can actually go over to the National Hurricane Center website. Just go type in nhc.com, scroll down to Hurricane Ian on that website. And under that, there's going to be a little box there indicating storm surge inundation. And you can literally zoom in to your level, showing exactly what kind of storm surge, again, reasonable, reasonable worst case scenario your home could have. Farther south, high tides, Marco Island, Naples, Everglades, also running between, Everglades City rather, also running between about 2, 3, 4 p.m. So high tide occurring when we're going to see one of the biggest pushes of water, which is why we have to take this scenario very seriously, but we have prepared for it. Wing slides out for 3X showing that I is currently about 100 miles or so south and west of Marco Island. We've begun to see those rain bands push on shore where we continue to deal with some gusty squalls through portions of Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, Rotunda right now, you're currently dealing with a heavier band moving through. We've been hearing it here in the studio, kind of the rain lightening up at times, getting a little bit heavier at times. That's what's happening all across Southwest Florida right now. Arcadia, you just dealt with a fairly heavy band. Lighter the farther south and east you go in DeSoto County. We also have some heavier bands for Ave Maria, Amakli, Bonita Springs, and Vanderbilt Beach. It's wet, it's breezy outside, but if you have not yet evacuated and you are under those evacuation more orders, I highly recommend doing so. I know it's hard to leave your home, but now would not be a bad time still. You still can be heading out of the roadways. I would say it's still going to be fairly windy. We still have seen already some of those tropical storm force wind gusts, but not bad. And you don't have to evacuate very far. You can just go to a friend's house that's inland, and even that would help outside of that evacuation zone. The wind field, you can see that expanding from Ian as it continues to track northward. And yes, we are now in that hurricane, uh, rather hurricane winds kind of circle here that's highlighted in red. Lee County, Charlotte County, even DeSoto County, and even potentially a northern Collier County. So timing this out as we head throughout the overnight time frame, we're going to start to see winds pick up. On average, we've seen gusts between right now for southern zones, clocking in at around 30 to 40 miles per hour. As we head into what should be later on uh, this morning, we'll be looking at those winds picking up. This is 10 a.m. Notice we start to see those hurricane force wind gusts arriving for Sanibel, Captiva, portions of coastal Lee County, and even northern Collier County. Traveling through the rest of the morning, this is 1.30. Winds continue to strengthen as that eye wall gets closer to our coast. This particular model, I will say, has that landfall a little bit farther north, but we could see it again anywhere between really areas like uh, Sarasota County down through portions of southern Lee County is still where that cone extends. But bottom line, we're expecting the strongest of the winds this afternoon, about 1, 2, 3, here's about 4.30 and onward into the early evening hours, about 5, 6 p.m., we should start to see those then lighten up thereafter as this continues to work its way northward. There's still some very breezy to even windy conditions across the area heading into tonight. By tomorrow morning, 
Winds lightening up even more, but the direction is still onshore, so we're still going to be dealing with that potential to see some storm surge. We have actually had some tornado warnings. Uh, I don't know if meteorologist Nash Rhodes is actually about to explain those, what we have seen. We actually even had a report of what could be some tornado damage in Lehigh Acres. We've been getting some emails about that. We did have a tornado warning earlier on in Lee County, and it's important to heed those as well. Uh, so we're going to turn it over to meteorologist Nash Rhodes at the moment. Yeah, we had an unconfirmed tornado report out of Lehigh Acres, which is a little bit tricky as we did have tornado warnings in that area. But additionally, we had some very strong straight line winds with a cell that pushed through there right around midnight, uh, uh, just about an hour ago here. Uh, roughly right now, that eye still about 60 to 70 miles away from us, and those wind speeds are only going to drastically increase as it gets closer and expect that pressure level to drop as well as that eye gets even closer to shore and more and more chances for tornadoes will be possible as we still do have that tornado warning in place for central Collier County. This particular cell drifting to the north and west and crossing portions of I-75 right now. This uh, just to the west of uh, State Road 29 at this point in time and Winks Live Doppler 3X still showing that rotation not as strong as what we saw moments ago and that will be continuing that path to the north and west fairly quickly here soon. If you are within the path of any tornado warning throughout the rest of this morning, and we're expecting to see a lot of them, just a heads up, the lowest floor and center of your home is going to be the most ideal place. Put yourself away from windows and protect your head with a helmet, blanket, or pillows. They've done studies. Just wearing a helmet can increase the likelihood of you surviving even a significant tornado, EF3+, plus, and make it a roughly a 98% survival rate if you heed all the other uh, safety tips with regards to tornado warnings. Additionally, if you are just uh, weathering the storm, so to speak, and maybe watching Wink News right now, just make sure that you're in the interior section of your home if you are within this warning at this point in time. And as I mentioned, I do expect more warnings to be issued here shortly as the National Weather Service has informed us more and more rotating cells are pushing in off the Atlantic and they are moving very quickly within our viewing area. Currently, tornado watches are in effect for Highlands to Soto counties all the way down south to the southern tip of Florida, really encapsulated all of South Florida at this point in time. Those watches persisting until 5 a.m. As we get new updates on tornado watches and tornado warnings across the region, we'll of course keep you updated. At this point in time, though, I mentioned those wind speeds. Take a look at current wind speeds along the coastline. About to hit that 30 mile per hour sustained mark. As we mentioned moments ago there on Fort Myers Beach, sustained winds at about 35 miles per hour is what we saw moments ago on the tower cam. We'll be keeping a close eye on these wind speeds, especially to the south and west. As as that eye wall will be approaching and of course as far as landfall is concerned that would likely be farther to the north but at least as that eye wall approaches the coast of Collier County we will see these wind speeds uptick significantly within the few the next few hours specifically the next three hours or so. Thanks, Nash. And I think it's good that uh, graphic he showed about what to do and where to go in your yeah. home for the tornado. Something to keep in mind, too, once we see Ian move this way and we see that eye wall become, come closer. Because, again, that's when you're going to experience those uh, strong wind gusts and you're going to be, need to be in the safest interior most place in your home and keeping there until you're given the all clear and you're probably going to hear a lot of strange sounds too so just be mm. uh, safe in your home i do want to mention before we go to break really quick um, if you have to you can listen to us on the radio 96.9 wink fm and then 101.1 the wave we're simulcasting so you can listen to us no matter where you are uh, here's a graphic again 96.9 wink fm and wave 101.1 you can listen to us um, all throughout the situation here and then even when the storm passes. We're going to take a quick break. Our continuous coverage on Hurricane Ian back next. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Charlie Crist is increasing costs, hurting Florida families. He voted for inflationary spending that exploded the cost of gas, groceries, and housing, costing Florida families $500 per month. Crist voted to increase taxes on gas and opposes affordable American energy. Charlie approved the largest increase in taxes and fees in Florida history. Charlie Crist, he wants to raise your taxes. I don't like to raise taxes. I did it as governor. Would you do it again? If necessary, I would. Today, push harder, push forward, push vigorously. There are things that I am hiding from people that I'm trying to inspire. You can do whatever you set your mind to. I feel like a hypocrite a lot of the times. Don't give up on yourself ever. Smoking, I hide it because I'm ashamed of it. I want to get out of the shadow. 
I want to show people there is light away from the darkness. I am going to quit. Visit TobaccoFreeFlorida.com to find free resources to help you quit your way. My crypto's down. No coiner. Trust. This will move. Do the fragging seat. Res, res, hit me. I got my ult. That's 472 horsepower and 395 pound-feet of torque. Well, what's up with this team sheet? Inverted fullback and a false nine? The limited slip diff lets you hammer the throttle. You don't get it until you go all in. Poggers! Stick it in the onion bag! The Lexus IS, all in on the sports sedan. I met Governor DeSantis in 2009 when he was on active duty. He was a Navy commissioned officer and served in Iraq. When you're advising SEAL Team 1, you're making life and death decisions every day. And as someone who has served side by side with him, he is selfless and he will do what is in your best interest, not his best interest. The Navy's core values are honor, courage, and commitment. And Governor DeSantis embodied those core values on active duty and he embodies them every day as the governor of our state. Governor DeSantis is a true servant leader. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. And welcome back again. We are in a continuing co continuous coverage for Hurricane Ian and here you see it right behind us on Wink's live Doppler 3X. Um, a very strong storm, very well defined eye at this point and we're feeling the bands coming through. You're probably hearing the wind outside and they're all the rain already. And that's just the beginning. And if you're hearing that and you've got the shutters up in your house, I know you're thinking this is very scary. Yeah. The good news, I guess you could say the silver lining in this is the majority of this. It seems like as we're talking to our weather team is this is going to be a daytime event. So hopefully still not seeing anything because you've got your shutters up, but at least not having to deal with that unknown of what's happening overnight and then and that, waking up in the morning. And that's pretty frightening too when it's all at night, you know, it's Hurricane scary. Irma that way. We, there was a lot of things happening in the dark. It was pretty frightening. Um, so hopefully we'll not have to deal with a lot of that during Hurricane Ian. Let's get out to reporter Liz Byro, who is stationed at a hotel along Vanderbilt Beach. Uh, first, Liz, it looks like not dealing with too much wind where you are. Well, the wind actually, it's interesting. It'll stop for a little bit and then it will just pick up out of nowhere. And we just a few moments ago were having wind and therefore rain coming through the screen and splashing onto us. And right now, I mean, it's hard to see from outside, but this is the lagoon. This is not the Gulf, but the water is very choppy and all the homes around this lagoon do have their boats lifted up. But we do feel fairly safe here right now. Again, we're at Vanderbilt Beach Resort where the staff has done a very good job of making us feel safe. They stopped by a few hours ago bringing us cases of water uh, just checking in on us so, yeah uh, Liz you're talking about the staff there if we can hang with you for a moment uh, kind of explain to us what the safety precautions have been where you guys are to make sure everyone who's in uh, that facility is okay Mm -hmm. Well, they closed down the elevators around 6 o'clock today, I mean, just for safety in case the power goes out or anything. But like I said, they've been dropping off water. When we checked into the hotel, the woman we spoke to at the lobby was very kind, checking in on us, making sure that we feel safe. That's good to know there, you know, and we've seen that a lot of hotels, uh, especially, you know, some in downtown Fort Myers State, the precautions as well, closing things down because at this point, uh, it's just not safe for people to be coming and going in and out. Yeah, and checking in, you'll find that a lot of people check in with uh, each yeah. other just to make sure. I believe we have Adriana Shepard, who is a little bit north of there in downtown Fort Myers. Uh, Andy, what are you seeing where you're at? Right now, the wind picked up a little bit compared to when I talked to you guys about an hour ago, but it's still not terrible. Overall, downtown is calm in all aspects of the word. There's no people out here. The wind, it's all right. The rain, barely anything at all. One or two drops are hitting my eyes every now and then. But the most concerning thing is the water here that it's pulling out toward the Caloosahatchee. We don't like that at all. But the wind, not terrible. The water is the most concerning thing at the moment. Like I said, pretty calm down here. I wouldn't come down here if you don't need to be, but there's nobody else here besides us. It's very, the wind just picked up right now. Barely any rain at all. Other than that, pretty calm. The water's pretty terrible. But other than that, not, not too bad down here in downtown Fort Myers. Live in Fort Myers, Andreana Shepard, Wink News. Andreana, thank you. And you know, what she was talking about, you know, 
places being boarded up, mm -hmm. uh, driving into work even throughout your neighborhoods. It is an eerie sight seeing all of those homes, even the businesses boarded up. Uh, reporters on Fifth Avenue in Naples earlier, usually bustling with people, the restaurants open. Nobody is out. Everything is boarded up and they're getting ready for the hurricane. And you can even hear in her voice, it's it's calm, yeah. you know, like almost like, I don't know. It's just it's, it, it's that's awkward. how it's going to be until it's not. And that's, you know, that's that's good news. That means people are heeding the warnings going inside, yes. which is where we want you at this point. Let's get back over to weather authority meteorologist Casey Sherman really breaking down today and tomorrow and what we are facing. Yeah, today is the main day of impacts. And in fact, we are only about five hours away from starting to feel those for our southern zones. That time frame is going to continue to uh, kind of get later as you move northward into Lee and Charlotte County, where we are projecting a landfall of the system in southwest Florida sometime late in the afternoon between about noon to I would say 5 p.m. today. Main threats with this, we've been breaking these down, wind, beach erosion, storm surge is going to be really the biggest one we have most concern about. We're going to, of course, continue with that threat for freshwater flooding for those inland zones, some of the heavy rain we're expecting. And we continue with a at least medium threat for a tornado. We have seen a tornado a warning or two across the area. And power outages with this kind of wind and this kind of storm, we're going to be dealing with several across the area, uh, likely for days in some spots, perhaps even weeks in the more rural areas with these kind of extremely strong winds that are forecast. It is a Category 3 hurricane after all, major hurricane with additional strengthening expected. It is currently about 92 miles, at least that center, that eye where you can see no rain is present, 92 miles to the south and west of us. And if you've not been in a hurricane before, the eye, it's nice and calm. So while we see this pass over what will likely be areas like Charlotte County or into Lee County, uh, we'll be looking at what will be a period of calm conditions sometime late this afternoon in those areas. You'll notice it. You'll step outside and you'll see the sunshine. You'll see the blue sky. Uh, but just remember, what, after you pass through one side of the eye wall, you get into the uh, eye, you have another eye wall on the other side of that still to get through. So you need to stay inside as that eye is passing, as this will be a fairly uh, quick moving system by the time it's then moving over our land areas. Right now, that eye is currently about 33 miles wide in diameter. It is a wide eye wall, so you'll have about a 33, or if this uh, manages to stay about the same, we're talking about 30 miles of dry weather once the system passes over land. You can see the outer portion of this where we've got the yellows, the reds, along with lightning, that is the eye wall that is the most dangerous part of a hurricane with those strong winds along with some very heavy rain. And that would be the most dangerous time frame is when we see that pass over land sometime late this afternoon into the evening. So we are currently, I would say, about roughly 12 to 15, 16 hours away from that eye wall passing over our area. Right now, we're currently just dealing with some gusty bands of rain. We're doing okay right now across the area. Of course, we have seen a lot of rain, to some ponding, a little bit of localized flooding already because we have such unfortunately saturated grounds because of all the rain we've had this rainy season. But we're doing fine nevertheless. We've got these passing bands at the moment that continue across Charlotte County, Lee County, Collier County, they're moving pretty quickly as anticipated with this quick flow around Ian. We're tracking some moderate rain through Punta Gorda, out through the Cape Hayes Peninsula, light rain for uh, Rotunda. We're heading into a period that's just going to be featuring the same kind of thing over and over again, at least into, I would say, tonight. So we have about almost a 24-hour time span of seeing rounds and rounds and rounds of rain, which is why freshwater flooding, it is going to be a big issue with this system, along with saltwater flooding from storm surge. Arcadia, you're actually currently beginning to dry things up at the moment. As we travel a little bit farther off to the south, we currently have some additional heavier bands of rain. Bonita Springs, Ave Maria, Immokalee, and along that stretch of I-75, Naples, Golden Gate right now, you're currently looking at some light rain. A look at the statistics from the National Hurricane Center. We had those stats updated at 1 a.m. We should have a new forecast cone coming out at 5 a.m. this morning. So in the next about 
three and a half hours. 120 mile per hour max sustained winds, pressure at 953 millibars. The system is moving to the north northeast at 10 miles per hour. We're likely going to continue to see this expand as it does so. It is currently forecast to be a 130 mile per hour category four storm on its approach to landfall. This is 8 a.m. this morning. So within about the next six, seven hours, this is going to be paralleling uh, the Collier County coast. At that point in time and onward, Collier County, you're going to start to see some of that storm surge thanks to the motion of the winds around this hurricane. So Collier County beginning this morning, that progression is going to move northward as this system continues to move northward throughout the afternoon. Eventually, this should be paralleling areas like northern Collier County, Lee County. We're talking about Bonita Springs, Estero, Fort Myers Beach. I would say anywhere between about lunchtime to about 1, 2, 3 p.m. Current forecast has this making landfall at that point in time around the Sanibel Captiva area, pushing inland into the Charlotte Harbor, likely around 6, 7 p.m. And this is about 8 o'clock. It's over about DeSoto County. The good news is, I will say, as opposed from yesterday, this does look like it's going to be moving a bit faster. The trough that unfortunately did also manage to push it a bit farther south and east, it is going to help it kind of speed up a bit. So notice, although it pushes inland at a little bit of a slower pace, it jets out of here as we head towards Thursday evening. It's already going to be off the east coast. So by that point in time, we're going to start to see improvements. I would say by Thursday morning, improvements already certainly in the rain and the wind, that we're still going to be dealing with some storm surge on the back side of this through at least the first half of the day for Thursday. A look at those model plots. We have seen, of course, tighter agreement as we would anticipate now that we are just hours out from the main event. We still have some solutions that take it farther north, uh, looking more likely to have a scenario that does take it into our northern zones. That's what the consensus census models have been agreeing upon, but it doesn't take much. Each and every mile counts when you have a system that's paralleling our coast. It doesn't take much in terms of wobbles to have it maybe shift a little bit, a little bit farther to the west, maybe a little bit farther to the east. We're going to hope for any kind of westerly, any mile west that we can get, but we're preparing for a direct hit here in either Lee or Charlotte County. At this point, I wouldn't even take off the table, though, the potential to see a direct hit closer to Collier County if we do see an sh additional shifts to the east. Rainfall totals, I'll apologize, these contours not loading, uh, but you can see the numbers at least. We're talking about anywhere between three, four, five inches of rain, heavier totals of up to 10 inches of rain, perhaps even up to maybe a foot closer for some of those areas north and west. Cape Pace Peninsula, northern, uh, rather southern Sarasota County for the system. As far as winds go or wind gusts picking up as we head into this morning, this is about 7 a.m. So this takes us into about the next six hours from now. We start to see some stronger tropical storm force winds across our coastal areas. Here comes that center moving northward. This is 9 a.m. this morning. We'll be looking at what should be some hurricane force winds at that point in time for some of our coastal areas. And from there, we'll continue to see these winds increase as the system gets closer 11 a.m am talking about gusts at that point in time possible near about Sanibel close to 90 miles per hour about 65 mile per hour gusts at that point in time for Fort Myers Bonita Springs dealing with hurricane force wind gusts at that point in time this is late this morning this continues to travel northward this is a look at 1 p.m. gusts between 60 70 even closer to 90 miles per hour for some of those coastal areas of Lee County and then this begins to make that turn to the northeast it's at this point in time 334 5 p.m. that we're going to see that eye wall beginning to pass through. At this point in time, if you're in these areas that experience the eye wall, most likely it's going to be somewhere around the Charlotte Harbor area, Sanibel Captiva. It is going to sound loud if you are still in your home. You need to shelter in place at that point in time. It's going to very sound very loud. A lot of people describe it like a train rushing through with these winds picking up to an over 100, 110, 115 miles per hour. We'll continue with the windy conditions as we head into even 7, 8 p.m. this evening. Improvements will likely begin as we head into after about midnight tonight. And we're going to start to see those winds lighten up as we head into Thursday, Thursday morning. A lot of us, at least the rain certainly looks like it's going to begin to end. But again, that ongoing storm surge because you can still see the direction is coming out of the west. For more on specific impacts, county by county, we're going to turn it over to meteorologist 
Coast Nash roads. Yeah, Casey, as you mentioned, the model's coming to a consensus, so we can start getting into the exact details of this forecast county by county. First up with Collier County. I do want to note, though, before we get into the exact numbers, that Collier County, your tornado warning we covered moments ago has now expired, so there are no active tornado warnings currently in Collier County. Rainfall totals are between 2 to 5 inches. Of course, those are preliminary estimates, but we're starting to pin down that exact forecast now that we do have bottle agreement. Wind gusts from 50 to 85 miles per hour will be possible. And watch that storm surge graphic down here. 5 to 8 feet possible for Collier County. This is on the southern side of our viewing area, so this will receive those impacts slightly earlier than our northernmost counties. But as we travel farther north towards Lee County, that storm surge graphic now updated to 8 to 12 feet. That is the latest forecast from the National Weather Service, and all of our forecasting models tend to agree with those numbers. Tornadoes will be possible as we've already seen warnings earlier this morning and wind gusts between 70 to now 105 plus. That plus is very important. Miles per hour will be possible, and that's because the potential for a landfall in Lee County and additionally the potential for a landfall in Charlotte County. A quick check in with the latest updates for Charlotte County. Four to nine inches of rainfall is to be expected. A few spots with 10 plus inches of rain. Some models much higher than just that 10 inch mark, so we will be monitoring that situation carefully as we will be monitoring Sarasota County. Also, tornadoes will be possible for the next few hours in Charlotte County as well, but note that storm surge 8 to 12 feet, just like Lee County. We're going to keep those numbers as we progress into Sarasota County with the 8 to 12 foot storm surge. Gust from 85 to 125 miles possible. We would expect this storm to still be on the strong side as it does make its approach into southwest Florida. A few days ago, it looked like some shear would at least weaken this storm as it did make its approach. For now, that's looking less and less likely. We are planning on a high end category three or middle to low end category four storm as it would make landfall later on today. DeSoto and Highlands counties, those impacts beginning to drop, especially as you get away from the coastline. Storm surge no longer an issue, but four to eight inches of rain will be expected with a few spots over eight inches of rain, depending on where those uh, outer bands begin to set up shop. When you get outer bands that are very slow moving, they can drop a lot of rain and a very short amount of time. We've mentioned these tropical systems are prolific producers of rainfall. They drop heavy totals within very short periods, and that's likely what we would expect, not just for the coastline, but also our inland zones where we could see flooding in spots like Arcadia, which unfortunately do not need to see that flooding at the moment. Gusts between 70 to 100 miles per hour will be possible there. Think of this as a slider. As you approach Lake Okeechobee, those impacts beginning to drop, but as you go farther to the west towards LaBelle, those impacts increasing. You'd be more on the higher side of that 80 mile per hour wind gusts possible. Tornadoes will be possible as well for these inland spots. And as we'll talk about in just a moment, it looks like a cell with a little bit of rotation will be working its way into Hendry County here shortly. One last thing I do want to touch on, and Casey has mentioned this as well, that wind field is very large with this storm. The amount of tropical storm force winds will extend very far away from the storm center. We could even see lots of reports of hurricane force winds sustained as this system does push inland into many of our interior counties like DeSoto, Highlands, or perhaps even western sections of Glades County, depending on where exactly this makes landfall. Of course, as we pin down that exact landfall, we can get you ex better estimates as to our forecast, but for now I'm going to send it back to you. All right, Nash, thank you. And part of the way they get all of this information is from the hurricane hunters yeah. who are flying into Ian right now. This video was shot Tuesday morning, and these pilots keep that aircraft steady. You see them here, and what they do is they go into the eye, and they have equipment that can drop down, and it measures everything from the pressure, humidity, temperature, all this information that they can then analyze and that's where we get the information and we get these new cones and different advisories and information about Ian. The next one that's going to be out, which shows us the update on the track, will be at 5 a.m. this morning. So we're sticking with that 11 p.m. cone was the latest to come down. Once they are completing their mission, I believe this will be the last one for them of the day. 
that information will come down to us and we will pass it along to you again at five. A crucial job that they do Very for crucial. every storm. Uh, let's go over to Lisa Hudson. Lisa, you're getting in some reports of really bad damage on the East Coast and they're seeing this even though, you know, the storm is not exactly going to hit them directly. They're still seeing the damage over there. Exactly. You're seeing how wide this storm really is. I mean, it, it's affecting everyone here. This is a video from a journalist that is there in southeast Florida right now. You can see this is video from a Home Depot. It's a little dark. It was taken at night, but you can see the, some of the flashlights people out there trying to see exactly what's going on. Whole trees uprooted and laying in that parking lot. This again in southeast Florida. I'm going to see if I can stop this video real quick, keep it playing, and then I'm going to show you another uh, video. Here you go. You can see some of the trees laying down there. My goodness, if you look also, uh, FPL, they put out a video. They have actually been restoring power in Miami-Dade. Here's a video that they have. Um, they had crews up. This was just six hours ago, uh, restoring the power there in that county. They're already, <laughs> it, it, they're on top of it down there. So that is something good to know. But again, we are seeing this damage, not just, it, well, we're seeing most of it right now in Southeast Florida. Cuba, of course, saw so much. We're seeing a lot online uh, from photos that, again, losing the entire power grid in Cuba. Again, now we're seeing some of this damage in Southeast Florida. You can see Ian making its progression, and this is what we're going to have to deal with, guys. Uh, it's, it's just unfortunate to see and that's that's the fact of the matter if you're from the midwest you know i know i was used to those tornado warnings that lingered much like we're sure. experiencing with a hurricane and here with the the just the all the perfect conditions these tornadoes can pop up seemingly out of nowhere and that's why it's so important if we get these warnings that you just go straight to where you can a safe space in your home because they do pop up quickly and, and they can night. cause a lot of damage and you can't see anything especially yeah. in the dark that's what's so scary uh, i do want to show you some video of out of hollywood florida look at this here my goodness planes uh ripped to pieces some just throw around like toys. You see this here? This is a result of a tornado uh, spawning from Ian. And again, Hollywood, Florida, at an airport there. Look at that. The power mm. of the wind just knocking these planes around just like little toys there on the tarmac. That does almost look like a toy. You have to remember how large yeah. these different vessels can be. Let's switch gears and get another look at our conditions here right now in southwest Florida. Turning to Fort Myers Beach, where reporter Annette Montgomery has been dealing with some wind gusts. I think last time we checked in with our team of meteorologists, it was around 35, yeah, 35 miles, miles per, per hour. hour How's it feeling right now, Annette? Lindsay, still feeling windy. It's actually now starting to feel a lot more wet. I'm going to show you the back of my pants completely soaked, and I'm somewhat under an awning, so that's surprising. I'm also going to show you we're seeing more minimal ponding. Again, for the radio viewers, it's not covering my boots, my rain boots at this time, but it's obviously rising. We're seeing this rising slowly. But yes, again, the wind is the big, big, big problem here. I'm going to move out of the way and have my photographer just show you. You can see from the way these trees are swaying, you can see from that flag how it's swaying up and down. We do see See some downed palms. We have yet to see any downed trees, but we have heard a lot of noises since we've been out of here, a lot of bangs. So I don't know if that's things knocking down. Now to give perspective, this is zone A, Fort Myers Beach. So one of the first areas around 9 a.m. yesterday morning that Lee County, um, Lee County officials actually put in a evacuation order for a mandatory evacuation order. So they knew wind was going to be a problem. They knew water was going to be a problem. I would walk and show you the water, but the last time I tried to do that, the mic went out. So I don't know if it's the wind. So I'm going to stay here. But yes, we're seeing the water. It's starting to sway as well. So definitely wind, water, a major issue for people here in Fort Myers Beach. Now, I know yesterday afternoon we told you that a lot of the gas stations were boarded up. And I can confirm this morning they are still boarded up. We've seen several gas stations that have wood on the doors and on the windows of the building and then the gas pumps do actually have bags over them so I don't know if there's any gas stations currently open in Fort Myers Beach but all of the ones we passed from Vanderbilt Beach to here are boarded up. Another thing to note, we drove from Vanderbilt Beach to here, and as we were driving, I was getting several warnings. I got a severe weather warning, I got a storm a storm surge warning, and then I also got a hurricane warning. So obviously a huge, huge concern down here, but like I said, the major, major, major issues right now is wind. 
Yeah, and Annette, I'm curious, you know, um, I have family members evacuating. They say there is no traffic right now on their route to the other side of the state. Are you seeing any traffic on the beach? Maybe people leaving uh, with just hours to go left that they can do it safely? Corey, we have yet to see any cars drive on this road. And I have to say, actually, on our way here from Vanderbilt Beach to here in Collier County, we did see some traffic. Once you got to Fort Myers Beach, there was no one on the road, absolutely no one. Like I said, the gas stations were boarded up. So I don't know if people either, they decided to evacuate or they're deciding to shelter in place. But I will say if people do want to evacuate Fort Myers Beach, I would say now is the time because, as I said, I'm showing you just the wind and how bad it is. And you've heard from our meteorologists this morning, Nash and Casey, that the wind down here, the water down here, it's only a matter of time before it gets worse. It's not going to get better. So I would definitely say if people have the idea of evacuating Fort Myers Beach, now this morning would be the time because the wind is only going to pick up. And right now at this point, it's, it's pretty bad. Annette, you mentioned you couldn't walk over to the water because of your microphone cable. Understandable. But you are our eyes and ears out there. So if you can paint that picture where are you standing? What were you walking towards? And describe what you are seeing in the water there. And are we talking about the gulf here? Or are we talking about ponding on roadways? We're talking about both, mainly the ponding on the roadways. As I showed you, I showed you this pond. This is very minimal compared to what we saw. We were actually hydroplaning on our way here in Fort Myers Beach. Certain roads you were hydroplaning. So definitely the water is a major concern. So if people are on the roads, they should definitely drive slow and be careful. Yes, I was going to show you the beach. We're right actually next to the beach. Maybe let's try, Doug. Let's try to walk. Let's try to show them the water. I know you all want to see it. We're going to walk very slowly so we can show you all it without my mic cutting out. But in the meantime, I'll just give you all an update on, again on what I've been saying. We are in Zone A, Fort Myers Beach, an area that is under a mandatory evacuation. Now, I know Liz Byro, one of our reporters, was here yesterday, and she was saying around 10 a.m. she saw people trying to evacuate off the bridge. So definitely, I know some people evacuated. I don't know if others are, but I'm going to show you what we're seeing with the water. I'm going to try to have my photographer zoom in. What we're seeing right now is definitely high tide. We're seeing a lot of water rising high. So definitely a major concern, obviously why leaders decided this is one of the areas that they should evacuate first. But as I said, if people are deciding to stay, they should shelter in place. But if you are on Fort Myers Beach and you're considering evacuating, I would definitely say now is the time. Wind is picking up. Water is picking up. But right now, I would say that this, this is the safest time to get out of Fort Myers Beach if you're considering it. Live on Fort Myers Beach, Annette Montgomery, Wink News. Annette, thank you. And I would say if you are considering evacuating, your window is closing pretty quickly. So if you need to make that decision, you got to get out, thank especially you. if you're on an island where hey. you have to go over a bridge. Mm -hmm. The wind already, uh, your car might be swinging a little bit on the roadway. Yeah, you got to be careful out there. A little bit earlier, our night side colleague sat down with Senator Rick Scott to speak about Hurricane Ian and what he has to say about all of this. Storm surge is a killer. Um, water's a killer. Um, so always think about it this way. Um, you can rebuild your house. You can't be rebuild your life. If you're in an evacuation zone, if they've told you to evacuate, do it now. Don't wait. I'll do everything. I, Marco Rubio and I, we made sure that the, you know, Joe Biden declared a, um, uh, a national emergency before landfall. So we did that. So I'll do everything I can to, uh, can to be helpful. And Senator Scott said that he knows FEMA is committed to doing everything they can to help, and he will, too, hearing that from state leaders across the board. Right, and they have made sure to declare these states of emergencies beforehand so that funding is in place and the people and supplies are in place. Uh, team in the back, if we can switch to our Sanibel Causeway camera. This shot is very telling. You can see the water here, and every now and then you'll see the raindrops come down and then a big gust of wind start really moving that water. And we, what we've seen over the past few hours is the tide slowly go out, basically Ian sucking this water out and then eventually it's going to push it back in. This is something we saw with Hurricane Irma. If you remember, we saw these images and it was quite startling because some of us have never seen anything like that before, the water all the way out. Uh, but here again is where the Sanibel Causeway is. And we were talking about wind and bridges. And you can see in this photo the waves of the water, the rain droplets in the wind. That's why it's not safe 
to be driving on bridges, especially when the winds reach 40 miles per hour. And that's when you will see emergency personnel not going out because it's just not safe. I believe we have Lisa Hudson standing by just getting us a latest update on power outages. Anything in our area yet we're seeing, Lisa? We have a few, but not a lot. Again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. We know this is going to increase throughout the day, but right now we're sitting pretty good. Only 158 outages. We're seeing just a couple on Sanibel, a few uh, right over here in Cape Coral that are a big cluster here in the red and orange zones, the evacuation zones there. They have got a couple of outages here. And then if we look back over here, just north of Immokalee, there's a few over here as well, about 74 out, 47 there. Uh, so a good cluster uh, right here as well that are, are, are without power. Again, this is on LCEC's map. If we flip over, uh, to FPL, you can kind of see uh, down here, they're actually not dealing with many outages at all. They're doing really well at this point. Um, just a few off in uh, on some of these barrier islands, but beyond that, uh, looking pretty good at this point. Again, we expect these outages to go up as the storm continues, Lindsay. All right, Lisa, thank you. And we are going to be keeping a very close eye on that. You talked directly with FPL oh, yeah. before hurricane season even started. What were some of the main messages they had for homeowners at that time? So the big message they had from homeowners is, you know, they have spent a lot of money in many years trying to what they call harden the grid, mm -hmm. right? They're trying to put power lines underground in areas where they can. They have the smart meters now. So basically, if your power is out and a lot of people's power is out because of a storm, they can go on their computer literally down to your street and your home and know that it's out. So that, well, you know, they tell me that's how they position their crews. They know where to go because they know where the people, where the most people have power outages and they can rebuild it quicker. And you know something that's interesting, I experienced this in Irma just talking to my neighbors. I never lost power. Apparently in my home I wasn't there. A couple doors down they did and they explained that that happens, you know, it's a whole artery and sometimes there might be one extension that's okay, but if another one gets caught yeah. off, that's why. And so there is rhyme or reason to it. I know we don't always feel like that. Let's turn back over to Weather Authority Meteorologist Casey Sherman. Uh, we are getting very close to when we're really going to start feeling some of this uh, eye wall moving in towards southwest Florida. Yeah, I would say eye wall uh, starting to move in. We're talking about about 12 hours from now, but a lot of us already feeling some effects, including, of course, the wind and the rain. The main effects are going to be starting to uh, start being felt, I would say, about five, six hours out from now, uh, beginning in the morning hours for Collier County as the system continues to move northward. That center is now about 92 miles per hour, around 90 two miles, I should say, offshore of Marco Island to the west-southwest. Now, a closer look into the track of this system, we've seen a lot of wobbles with it. Uh, really, over the past several hours, that little yellow line, that actually shows the previous path of this system. And you can see we've seen some shifts to the east with this. We've seen some brief shifts to the west. I will say, and this is the forecast track for the National Hurricane Center, Right now, you can see it is currently moving northward. They are projecting this turn to the north and east to happen pretty soon. If it follows that projected trajectory, it would have to make that turn to the north and east fairly soon. Right now, we're showing a little bit, though, of a due north direction. We'll have to see if this is just kind of a wobble from that track and if it does actually happen to make that northeasterly kind of turn here. Uh, but any kind of east west motion any even mile half mile would make some kind of difference in our impacts but right now the scenario does not look good for southwest florida look at those model plots we still do have some uh, that keep it at least a little bit to the north of our viewing area for landfall most of them though do take it at least through the northwestern portion of southwest florida or kind of right on that edge of our viewing area the consensus models certainly do so with that landfall through sanibel then out through pine island and up through the Charlotte Harbor area through about DeSoto County, and then it is out of here. So that's what the National Hurricane Center's track. It currently follows those, which is why we've seen this shift in our forecast comb over the past couple of hours. If you had stay tuned for the 11 p.m. update, you know what I'm talking about. Here is that forecast cone from 11 p.m. showing that landfall here in Sanibel, 
Pine Island, and then eventually crossing into areas like Punta Gorda, close to the Charlotte Harbor. I will say, at least from yesterday, and this is a little bit of a silver lining here, we have seen, because it is going to be impacted by the trough of low pressure that actually pushed it a little bit farther south, it's going to be picked up by it more. And that's actually going to lead to a little bit more of a fast forward motion with this system, as opposed to what we were looking at this time yesterday, where the cone, uh, really kind of the system stalled it out and moved very slowly by about Wednesday through Thursday. You'll notice, well, Wednesday, uh, rather tonight at about 8 p.m., it's over about DeSoto County. It jets out of here, and by tomorrow, it's already entering into the waters of the Atlantic. So I want to time this out for you with your future track model. As we head throughout this morning, this is 9 a.m., showing those bands of rain increasing for Collier, Lee, Charlotte County. Collier County are going to start to feel those very strong winds. And notice at that point in time where we start to see those winds out of the south and pushing up against those land areas, that's for especially areas like Marco Island, down through areas like Everglades City, your storm surge is going to begin as that water begins to push up. As it continues to move farther north, here we go into about lunchtime. This is going to be paralleling about Vanderbilt Beach area. Winds increasing at that point in time. Here is that eye wall. It is still offshore through about lunchtime, but we're going to start to see those winds push water into areas like the eastern side of Captiva, uh, parts of the also the Cape Hayes Peninsula from the Charlotte Harbor. And of course, we can't forget about Lake Okeechobee either. They also do get a little bit of storm surge. I would say their levee is probably going to hold it with this particular event with that center being farther away from them, but they would certainly see some choppier waters. This is actually the second largest contained lake in the United States, the other one being Lake Michigan. So they will see some effects like Okeechobee. If you live near uh, the Moorhaven area, Clewiston, that's right along that area, uh, you certainly may see some choppier waters uh, there, those wa waves pushing up. Um, but then the main storm surge will be felt more across the coast. Here's that center circulation moving north. Here is about 4 o'clock. We start to see that eye wall beginning to push on shore to areas like Captiva and Sanibel into areas like the Charlotte Harbor. This is the point in time we're going to be looking at some of the strongest of the winds, 3, 4, 5 p.m. and on into about 6, 7, 8 p.m. this evening as this continues to push on shore. Also, storm surge continues across areas like Fort Myers Beach, across areas like Sanibel. At that point in time, we're going to begin to see that storm surge still through portions of the Charlotte Harbor area. This moves northward, and notice it's now pushing inland at this point in time. Eye wall moving through areas like Charlotte, Northern Lee County by around 5 o'clock this evening. That is going to be the most dangerous conditions, 3, 4, 5 p.m. You need to be hunkered down at that point in time by this evening. It's going to sound very loud with that eye wall pushing through. A lot of people describe it like a train running through. You need to be in an interior room at that point in time in your home, even if you have those storm shutters up, still would recommend it to be safe rather than sorry. Here comes this system tracking off to the north and east, 9 p.m. Arcadia, that's going to be your time. DeSoto County, eye wall pushing through, 8, 9 p.m. And at that point, we start to continue to see that storm surge now beginning out of the west four down through Lee County. So Charlotte Harbor still now Punta Gorda. It's your chance to see some storm surge. Nine o'clock, your chance to see storm surge will then be on the western side of Captiva, still for Sanibel. In the Clusatchee River, we're really going to start to see it pick up likely at that point in time. The system continues to lift northward, 2 a.m. A lot of the rain, look at that, dissipating at that point in time. The rain beginning to lift out, at least the heaviest of it. But the storm surge continues to the overnight time frame tonight. And into your Thursday morning, a lot of the rain will be lifted out by Thursday morning. This is 8 a.m. as we're waking up tomorrow morning. But we're still going to be looking at that ongoing storm surge threat. It's by late Thursday into Friday that we're going to start to see those winds lighten up enough. We should start to see those waters recede. And then we're going to get back to normal Thursday night 
into Friday. We're currently dealing with some heavy rain across the area. For more on what we're currently dealing with locally and a closer look at the radar from Charlotte Lee down through Collier County and a look outside right now, we're going to turn it over to meteorologist Nash Rhodes. Yeah, quick check in with our Sanibel Causeway camera. You can see the rain is just coming down in buckets. A bit of a spray thanks to this being a tropical system, but still, as we've mentioned multiple times, a very prolific producer of rainfall with these outer bands. We're going to see more and more gusty winds continue to push through the area as this does eventually get closer and if we could switch it back here to weather one please behind me thank you so much temperatures are in the upper 70s for now those will continue to rise only into the 80s this afternoon a stark contrast from what we saw yesterday quick check in with the wind speeds notice along the coastline we are seeing these wind speeds quickly ramp up these are sustained winds not gust notice sustained winds now surpassing 30 miles per hour in Northport and Englewood even down to Marco Island 30 miles per hour is the current sustained wind speed there winds decreasing as you travel inland but I'd expect some of our southernmost coastal counties to see some of these stronger winds first as that eye wall does eventually get a little bit closer. A quick check in with Hurricane Ian's latest updates. 120 mile per hour sustained winds. 953 millibars is that current pressure level that was slightly up from an earlier advisory that we did have. However, it was going in under an eye wall replacement cycle to explain what exactly that is. I am going to pull out Winx Live Doppler 3X. As you can see over the past three hours or so, several holes in the outer layers of this eye wall and an eye wall replacement cycle really means those inner bands actually fading away, it becoming reorganized and reforming those outer walls. And that's what we typically see when we see a hurricane try to re-strengthen. Now that it has completed that eye wall cycle, it has sealed off all of those edges and we are now noticeably seeing more lightning on the northern side of that wall. We are expecting this to at least maintain its intensity, if not strengthen as it approaches southwest Florida, and that would fall right in line with the National Hurricane Center's latest forecast advisory. The number of strikes that we are still seeing out of the center of this is about 70 to 80. That has been consistent over the past 45 minutes or so, and as we've seen that eye wall ramp up, we have seen the bands that have been pushing through southwest Florida pick up speed in big numbers. Port Charlotte, Fort Myers, and Bonita Springs. You're seeing those bands zooming through the area right now. As we've seen with some of our reporters, at times it will only be a light rain with only light wind gusts, and then things will quickly take a turn as those bands push through, and what we call squally conditions will take place. That's when those winds pick up along the leading edge of a line of storms, and really quickly, and it, we see those wind speeds jump up from where they were. Wings Live Doppler 3X also showing some storms now passing through Bonita Springs. Bonita Springs, you're in the clear for a moment before more bands will fill in the area from the south and east. Estero, some of those heavier showers now passing through your area. However, Sanibel, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, some of these storms showing loose signs of rotation. We will continue to monitor them for a tornado threat as we will keep an eye on a few storms that we have tracked inland out towards Hendry County, just south of Clewiston. This particular cell had a warning on it about 30 minutes ago. It has since expired, but as it drifts to the north and west, we will be keeping a close eye on spots like Moorhaven and Clewiston to see if they reissue tornado warnings for those areas. For now, loose circulation with these storms, and unfortunately for us, all of these storms that we will be tracking this morning will likely have some loose circulation. That's just the nature of the beast when you have these strong forces of winds on the outer edges of Ian. Nash, thank you. Staying on top of it for us. Let's take you out live. Well, this is supposed oh, to wow. be uh, where you can see the southernmost point buoy in Key West, but it's very, very dark. You see the outline of the white on that red concrete buoy, but waves crashing. Waves the there you go. Right over it there. And well, let's take you back local here, even uh, Punta Gorda. Fisherman's Village, look at this. The palm tree is really whipping in the wind. The rain's coming down. And you see up there the clouds really starting to move. Very eerie looking outside. We're going to be right back with more continuous coverage of Hurricane Ian.
back one day and says, you know what, that did what he could for the community and this made a difference. When people need our help, we answer the call. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best in class fuel economy. Get 0% interest for 12 months this week at Recreational Warehouse. Full-featured hot tubs from just $19.95 in Fort Myers, Naples, and Port Charlotte. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Well, thanks for joining us again. We are going to be staying on air with you as we continue to monitor Hurricane Ian. More from Live Doppler Radar coming up next. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. When you think Miami, lots of things come to mind. But when you think Homestead Miami, it's everything. The vibrancy of South Beach and the calm of the Keys. It's where you get a weekend of a million thrills, leading to one of the final chances to make it to the championship four. It's everything we all think of when we think Miami, but so much more. I love this damn racetrack. Get your tickets now at homesteadmiamispeedway.com. Add drama to every drive. The exhilarating Audi SUV family. off-roaders, decorators, even lunchtimers. AutoNation Toyota is here for you and every driver, and we love getting you on the road. Right now, lease a new 2022 Toyota Highlander for just $369 a month, or new 2023 Camry for only $279 a month. Hurry to AutoNation Toyota or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. AutoNation Toyota. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best in class fuel economy. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Wink News, the weather authority. Thank you for joining us now at 2 o'clock as we are in now uh, continuous overnight coverage as we monitor the impacts of Hurricane Ian as the storm continues to slowly make its way closer to southwest Florida and other parts of the state as well. We have team coverage for you in these overnight hours as that storm becomes closer to us. Our teams are spread out all across southwest Florida as we are already seeing the impacts from that hurricane. But first, our team of meteorologists are working hard looking for any updates that come in. We have Nash Rhodes and Casey Sherman standing by with us this morning. I want to go over to Casey first. Uh, Casey, we've been tracking this and it's been a lot of happening overnight. If people are maybe still up with us as we're watching this, what do you want them to know right now? I want them to know that we are going to be with you every step of the way. This does look like it's going to be a very serious scenario here for Southwest Florida, especially with the fact that we have seen with the latest forecast cone a shift to the south and east yet again. I want to get weather two here. If we can throw that up behind me and take a look at this, at least the 2 a.m. advisory uh, that we did have from the system where we didn't have uh, where we didn't have much of a change. At least there is a look at Hurricane Ian. There it is. Weather two. Thank you. 100. 20 mile per hour winds moving to the north northeast at 10 miles per hour. Haven't seen any change in pressure or uh, at least a change in the wind speeds from the 1 a.m. advisory. The National Hurricane Center will continue to issue these intermediate advisories every hour now. The system is getting closer to us, but we'll have a new 
full forecast cone coming out at 5 a.m. Right now, though, it's fairly set in stone that we're going to be dealing with some major impacts here in southwest Florida from the system. I do say, and I will urge you, if you have not evacuated and you are in those areas that we're having or in order to mandatory evacuation, I would highly recommend doing so. This is not going to be an Irma for a lot of areas. If you are thinking, hey, I fared well during that storm, completely different storm on our hands. It's moving to the north northeast at 10 miles per hour, where we are expecting this to eventually make a landfall here in southwest Sorda, and that'll be for what right now the trajectory has it into Sanibel, then over towards Pine Island, and then out towards the Charlotte Harbor area as a major category four hurricane with around 130 mile per hour sustained winds as it approaches the coast. That is a big time storm here. Not trying to scare anyone, but this is a situation that we really need to take seriously. Storm surge is going to be a big deal with this, with especially something that has this strong of winds pushing that water right up along our coast. That is a threat we deal with here in Florida because we are so close to the water. So if you are just now tuning in, this is a change from what we had yesterday. Uh, really even the last night, if you're watching the evening coverage, where we now have a direct hit here in Southwest Florida. Notice as we take you through 8 p.m. tonight, it begins to move inland. I will say one little silver lining is, at least from yesterday's updates, this does look like it'll be moving a little bit faster than previously thought, where after about 8 p.m. tonight, it's going to be picked up by a trough of low pressure. It's the same trough, unfortunately, that kind of dug this south a little bit more. But because that trough is going to be more prevalent across the area, it's going to pick it up and help it really drive out of here so that by late Thursday, it'll be out towards the waters of Atlantic. So we're really heading into the thick of things now until this afternoon, this evening, tonight, still going to be looking at that storm surge potential as around the system, we've got that counterclockwise flow that's going to continue with that onshore flow, pushing the water up and preventing it from receding even through the overnight time frames as a uh, time frame as this moves to the north and east. So be mindful of that. We should be out of the woods, I would say, really beginning late Thursday night, transition day by Friday, and then we're done with this. But we're hunkering down right now. Here, are a look at those model plots, which continue to suggest that landfall very close to at least Northern Lee or Charlotte County. We still do have some solutions that do take it a little bit farther to the north and west. We're preparing for this one. The consensus models are the most accurate. That's what the National Hurricane Center based their forecast most heavily upon, and that does take it right through Sanibel, Captiva area, Pine Island, and then eventually through the Charlotte Harbor and out close to at least DeSoto County. So this is a big time deal for Southwest Florida. Here is that center right now, about 92 miles to the west southwest of Marco Island. We've seen what has generally been a little bit of a wobble, I would say, with a bit of a due north track over the past two hours. But with the latest scans, it does look like it's following now that more northeasterly trajectory that the National Hurricane Center is showing with that forecast track. Uh, we'll continue to monitor this, though, as any kind of wobble to the west would help us. There is that eye wall. The eye is about 30 miles or so in diameter. If you do have the eye wall pass over you, and right now, if that forecast verifies, that would be portions of North Lee, Charlotte County. You're going to notice by tonight, this evening, 5, 6, 7 p.m., bit of sunshine peeking out. Now, it's not a good idea to be stepping outside in that eye wall because we've got the, or rather the, eye, the eye of the hurricane because we have eye walls surrounding it. We get through the first eye wall, we have a bit of calm, and then we've got the second one. So just be mindful of that if this is your first hurricane experience. I know a lot of people have moved here from northern areas over the past year, so it very, very well could be. Out the door right now, what we're currently dealing with are some rotating bands of rain along with some wind. If you have not evacuated, now is the time to do so. This is still manageable. If you're out on the roadways, it is a little gusty, but all you need to do is evacuate a little bit farther inland. Again, we're highly encouraging you to do so if you are in those mandatory evacuation zones. The officials, they issue those for a reason. There's science behind it. 
So I highly recommend doing that. And right now, again, not a bad time. We do have some quick rotating bands. These are packing a punch in terms of some rotating cells, which we have seen with some tornado warnings. Right now, no tornado warnings in effect for our area. Just some heavy rain pushing through the Cape Hayes Peninsula, Port Charlotte, down through areas like Punta Gorda, Arcadia. You're now seeing some light to moderate rain at the moment. Farther south, we currently have some pockets of heavier rain now through the Immokalee area. Ongoing light showers through areas like Naples, Golden Gate, and also Lely Resort. As far as winds go right now, currently they're sustained between about 19 to 25, even 30 miles per hour right now sustained in Englewood, Punta Gorda. 31 mile per hour sustained winds currently in Port Charlotte. We will continue to see those winds pick up. Uh, at the moment, Gus at least not picking up reading at least for us. Peak storm surge, 8 to 12 feet for Charlotte Harbor, Caloosahatchee River, Pine Island Sound, Fort Myers Beach. We have seen the numbers for Collier County increase due to that recent shift in the forecast cone to the southeast. So that is now 6 to 10 foot storm surge for coastal zones of Collier County. That is the possibility in the range here given by the National Hurricane Center. Again, Hurricane Ian, there is that latest and close-up forecast track showing a landfall here in Southwest Florida sometime this afternoon or early this evening of more in terms of the specific timing with your latest future track model. I'm going to time it all out for you, show you when each area is going to be experiencing and when they're going to start being experiencing some storm surge coming up. All right, Casey, thank you. We want to go out now to uh, Wink News reporter Andriana Shepard. She's live in downtown Fort Myers. That's one of the areas in Lee County under mandatory evacuations in that zone A. It's right along the Caloosahatchee there. It's really, really picked up since the last time we spoke. The wind pretty gusty. A little while ago, it was really hard to actually get out of the car. I actually had my photog jump over the seat so that we could get out without the door flying completely open. But you can see how windy it is right now. Just look at these trees. Very, very, very windy. As for the rain, still not that rainy. It's just really, really windy. Now we're over in downtown Fort Myers where a lot of the businesses here are boarded up right now it's all the businesses kind of alongside wise guys deli all of them have these shutters kind of pointed down not seeing that many people outside if there are any but if there are people outside they're kind of driving around almost like they're trying to leave so now would be the best time to leave if you wanted to evacuate if you decided to right now because not many people are on the roads and the winds are just now starting to pick up so not terrible it, it is drivable, but if you were going to evacuate, I would do it now. Live in Fort Myers, Andreana Shepard, Wink News. Well, the National Guard gears up in southwest Florida. A Wink News crew took footage outside of the Lehigh Acres Library. This is where guardsmen will wait out Hurricane Ian and they'll get directions from Lee County Emergency Operations Center. Their presence comes as Governor Ron DeSantis announced 5,000 Guard members have been activated and pre-positioned across the state. And of course, we already are seeing a lot of those wind speeds start to pick up, even where Andy was. We just talked with our meteorologist team, and they've seen gusts up to 30 miles an hour right around that number. Remember, 40 miles an hour, that's where you do not want to be caught on those bridges. Certainly, it's not recommended. And that's also the wind speed where emergency crews do not respond to service. Uh, Matt Lachey and Pine mm -hmm. Island Fire District, in fact, one of those who has suspended service for the time being until the storm passes. And what that means, right? Fire crews, they say any calls to 911, they will be logged and then responded to once those conditions allow. Obviously, also based on is the need right now? Do we have to be there? and that precedence. Yeah, it's important that our crews stay safe so they are able to help us later on after the storm. And take a look, these 18 Lee County EMS ambulances and five supervisor vehicles, they're bunking in for the night at the Lee Civic Center. When Hurricane Ian passes, they're gonna swap out for any trucks that may have some problems, any mechanical difficulties on the roadways, and will boost operations as crews work through any backed up emergency call. So they are on standby and ready. And you see all those vehicles right there. Well, our Wink News reporter, Annette Montgomery, she has been live on Fort Myers Beach in these early morning hours. Of course, she's shown us a whole lot right now. Annette, what are you seeing? 
Well, Belinda, I don't know if you all just saw, but I turned around because for the first time since we've been out here, and we've been out here for hours now, I saw cars finally on the road. So I don't know if they're watching the news and they decided to evacuate, but we are in Zone A. We're in Fort Myers Beach, so one of the first zones, one of the first areas that Lee County officials issued a mandatory evacuation order for. Now, the wind, as I said, has been the major issue. It's not too bad right now, but earlier we saw the, the trees flowing. We saw the that flag flowing, we saw downed palms, but right now the wind isn't too bad compared to what we were seeing earlier. What I will point out though is that the ponds have grown. Now I know for our, our Wink News viewers, or our Wink News radio listeners, they're not able to see, but I'm showing you all, not only has the amount of water grown, but also how big the pond. When we first showed you it, it was very small, it's definitely grown exponentially. Now I'm also going to walk over this way. I showed you all this the last hour, but I want to show you it again. We are seeing high tide on the beach. We're seeing high water levels. So definitely this is major issue, major concern for county and city leaders, which is why this is one of the areas they issued a mandatory evacuation order for. Now a few things to note that I want to make sure that I voice right now. On our way, we came from Vanderbilt Beach to, to Fort Myers Beach, and on our way here, we saw all of the gas stations that we passed boarded up, all of the windows, doors with wood boarded up, and then all of the pumps had bags on them. So we didn't see any gas stations open on our way here. Another thing to note, as we were driving here, our car was hydroplaning, so definitely people are evacuating. Make sure to be safe. Make sure to drive slow. Belinda, I know you also mentioned the wind. Wind, a huge thing when driving. I know when we spoke with Nash on um, last hour, he said the wind in this area was around 35 miles per hour. So definitely very, very serious concern when driving with the wind as well. So be careful. Again, as I said last hour, I'm definitely going to try to reiterate this as much as I can. If you're in Fort Myers Beach and you're considering evacuating, now is the time. The wind is picking up. The water's picking up. Right now, it's died down a little. So maybe get out now if you can. But right now, it has died down. But as we've heard from Casey and Nash all morning, the wind, the water is only going to increase. It's not going to get better in this area. So definitely, if anything, if any takeaway you get from this, if you are considering evacuating now would be the time because we have been hydroplaning the wind is pretty bad and it's only going to get worse here in fort myers beach live in fort myers annette montgomery live in fort myers beach annette montgomery wink news all right annette thank you for being descriptive out there helping us kind of visualize and understand what you are experiencing out there stay safe out there for us and meantime hurricane Ian and it knocked out power all across cuba and take a look at this video you saw that water it washed right over the seawall into the streets of havana Cuba's electric union said in a statement, work was underway to gradually restore services to the country's 11 million people during the night. Of course, that's how many people are in the dark. Now, a possible tornado, it touched down Tuesday at North Perry Airport in Hollywood, Florida. It damaged multiple planes and a few hangars. Right now, you can see some of those planes from that overhead shot just ripped to pieces from those powerful winds. They look like they were tossed around just like a toy. At least two tornadoes touched down in Broward County between 7.15 and 8 p.m. Now, if you have not yet evacuated to a shelter, uh, Charlotte County Emergency Management is warning you. They put out this tweet that as soon as there are tropical storm winds, they are going to have to shut the doors to their shelters. They will not open and close them to anyone. They were estimating those would be around 2 o'clock this morning. Our weather team is keeping a close eye on when those would approach. But again, those doors will not open or close for anyone. No one can get in and out of shelters in Charlotte County once we reach those high winds. And water. Let's take a look here. Rising in Key West because of high tide. Key West residents, rather, they show us these high water just below their homes. Again, it's all flooded in there. And another thing we'd seen, again, just across that famous seven-mile bridge that connects Marathon to the Lower Keys, a lot of people evacuating because they know the drill, right? They know put the storm shutters, put those storm doors up, and get out, especially when this advisory is issued. I want to go out now to Wink News reporter Liz Byro. She's live at Vanderbilt Beach for us. I believe she's on uh, a balcony of a hotel there. Liz, what are the conditions looking like where you are right now? Well, the rain has just been coming down consistently for the last couple of hours and the wind it just howls and it whistles and even just based off of sound from being in the hotel room and being out on this balcony it's just getting louder that whistling is getting louder that howling is getting louder you can just hear the palm fronds even moving and 
the rain is just coming down. And it's interesting, if you look out at the road, I've been paying attention to it, just, you know, uh, how many puddles are forming. And you can see there are just slight puddles in the road right now, but we're paying attention to that to see if it gets any kind of flooding coming soon. All right, Liz, thank you. We'll continue checking with you throughout the morning as we know conditions will soon start to deteriorate. Well, Wink News sat down earlier with uh, Senator Rick Scott to speak about Hurricane Ian and what he has to say to all of you this morning. Storm surge is a killer. Um, water is a killer. Um, so always think about it this way. Um, you can rebuild your house. You can't be rebuild your life. If you're in an evacuation zone, if they've told you to evacuate, do it now. Don't wait. I'll do everything. I've, Marco Rubio and I, we made sure that the, you know, Joe Biden declared a, um, uh, a national emergency before landfall. So we did that. So I'll do everything I can to, uh, can to be helpful. So that includes about 3,500 reservists or 2,500 reservists uh, that are ready to go. Two urban search and rescue teams that are now stationed in Miami. There's a third search and rescue team that's now stationed in Mobile, Alabama. And then they have a 7,500 person search capacity force ready to deploy within 24 hours if they're needed. And Senator Scott said he knows FEMA is committed to doing everything they can to help, and he will too, he says. And Senator Marco Rubio, he gave an update with resources from FEMA. He says supplies and personnel, they have been pre-positioned between Georgia, Alabama, and here in Florida. And Rubio says the Army Corps of Engineers has a power restoration station in Alabama that will help utility companies bring back the power when it is safe to do so. Well, these are photos of Ian from the International Space Station. Take a look at this. this these are actually from the 26th. So they're a couple of days old. This storm is even bigger than this right now. But this is some of the photos. You can see how massive they were able to, to, to cap capture that photo. You can see the wind bands there in the back. And then this one, pretty incredible. Again, from the International Space Station, Ian showing up from space right now, Petrus. All right, Lisa, thank you. I'm hoping we can bring up the Sanibel camera mm -hmm. that we have here so we can give you a look at what conditions are looking like there. Pretty eerie sight right now with that reverse storm surge, that water being sucked back in from the force of Hurricane Ian. Here's a live look uh, near the causeway there, and you see just how low the water is. Very few people are left on Sanibel Island ahead of Hurricane Ian this morning. But we do have a crew there, Wink News reporter Claire Galt. She is on Sanibel Island. So, Claire, paint us a picture. What are you seeing right now? I'm standing here on the balcony of my hotel right now, and the rain really is starting to come down. It's a much different situation than when I last touched base with you all around midnight, but really the biggest difference I'm noticing is the wind. It's getting stronger. I had to go and grab a windbreaker because it's getting it's getting pretty chilly. Now, as you mentioned, there's not too many people on the island, not really any at all, but I did run in to one family who was actually checking into the hotel where I'm staying. They drove all the way from Cape Coral because they told me they were scared about flooding in their home. So they packed up their family of five and their puppy and drove all the way to Sanibel. They said they thought being in a hotel at kind of an elevated height would be a better option. Well, we uh, knew some people here and they said that we could get a room. So we decided to come here because it's safer because of the surge. And you never know how bad it's going to be until it's coming directly at you. So we decided to be wise and go higher ground. Now, remember that evacuation order for Sanibel is mandatory. So the city is urging you to evacuate. And as of 10 p.m. last night, Fire and EMS is no longer taking any calls. In fact, they're off of the island altogether. So if you're here, you choose to stay, you choose not to evacuate, and you need help, you're on your own. Live in Sanibel, Claire Galt, Link News. All right, Claire, thank you. Now, some breaking news. Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to give us another update from Tallahassee this morning ahead of Hurricane Ian's landfall in Florida. He'll be joined alongside Florida Department of Emergency Management and a mayor, major general with the Florida National Guard. Now, last night, late last night during his last press conference, Governor DeSantis says the storm is not something to joke about. There will be a catastrophic flooding and life-threatening storm surge on the Gulf Coast region. And of course, the highest risk will be in that Southwest Florida region from Naples uh, up to Sarasota. 
There's also potential for flash flooding and river flooding uh, with 10 to 20 inches, uh, inches across central and northeast Florida. And that meeting is happening this morning at 730 at the State Emergency Operations Center. Trust Week News will bring that to you live as soon as the governor is ready to speak. And we have seen photos of all those guard members ready to go, and that is some sort of a reassurance, at least during a time when our Weather Authority meteorologists are just tracking every movement of this storm. And it is a massive storm, as we have reiterated over and over again. Casey Nash joining us now. It's bring, bringing everything, really, uh, including mm -hmm. tornadoes, which you guys have been sending out alerts out all morning long. Any indication of how long that tornado threat is going to last? Yeah, so the tornado threat is going to last with these main bands moving through. So we're talking about right now, it's happening right now, through this afternoon, through this evening. It's likely going to be letting out beginning tonight. That's when we're going to start to see those rain bands let up and also the system lifting northward. It's the northeastern quadrant of the system that features that tornado threat. So once that's past us, I would say that's going to be around 9 p.m. this evening is when it's going to be completely past our area. That's when we should start to see that tornado threat let up. Of course, so then we've got some additional issues after the storm, once it even is lifting north and east, like storm surge, which is really going to be our biggest threat with the system. What are you anticipating over the next uh, 12 hours? Um, any major changes you're anticipating with the storm to come? Or are we in the final moments of pretty set in stone? Yeah, this is the time to really just hunker down. Uh, we are now, I would say, uh, roughly, uh, it's what, 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. now, so we're roughly about uh, 12, 13 hours away from landfall, which we're rejecting around 4 or 5 p.m. this mm -hmm. afternoon. So we are beginning to hunker down. I think if, if you have not evacuated, um, uh, today, right now, I would say is the time to do so. Uh, you are heavily urged, uh, urged to evacuate. If you're in those evacuation zones, I know we all got the alerts to our phones mm -hmm. if you are in those zones. And right now, we're really not bad. As we take a look at radar, we've been tracking just some showers, some of these heavy and bands. If we take a closer look at weather too, please, this will show the entire system moving through the area where we've have had some gustier winds across the area. And we currently are dealing with uh, also uh, what has been just some uh, ponding across roadways too, but nothing that you can't deal with if you are about to hit the roads right now. We've seen some gusts of up to around 30 miles per hour for some of our coastal zones zones, but overall nothing you can't handle on the roadways. It is going to get worse though as we progress throughout the remainder of these very early morning hours and certainly after about sunrise. So here is a look at uh, the center of the system. It is about 90 miles away or so from Marco Island at the moment. You can see those rain bands rotating in and you can certainly make out the eye wall here. This is the area of the heaviest of the rain along with you can see lightning firing up. That is a sign of strengthening at the moment, which we are, we're anticipating. We are continuing to anticipate what could be as strong as a category four. It could be a strong category four at landfall later on this afternoon. These are the wobbles the system has made so far. You can see in yellow, we've had some wobbles to the east, wobbles to the west. We could continue to see those, but the general track here, it's going to be to the north and east, and it does eventually take its landfall into around Sanibel Captiva and from there up through Charlotte County. So this is not meant to scare anyone, but this is one of the worst case scenarios here in Southwest Sorda, especially when it comes to storm surge. This is going to be a big time storm. Don't get complacent with it. If you're waking up or really if you're up right now and you're just noticing, hey, it's some rain, it's some wind, Things are going to get worse, especially as we head into this afternoon with that landfall and with that storm surge picking up later on today, which is why we're saying heed those evacuation orders. If you're told to evacuate, you need to leave. You cannot run from storm surge. You can't run from water. You can board up your house from winds, but you can't stop the water really so much from coming in. It's about 70 miles away from that projected landfall is the eye wall. That is the strongest part of the storm. Right now, just some bands of rain traversing through the area. Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, we've seen some rotation with some of these. We've got some heavy bands through Cape Coral, Fort Myers right now. The Moorhaven area in Clewiston and down through areas like Naples, Lely Resort, and Marco Island. 
I want to time out the storm surge. We look at the wind direction for the storm surge because that's what eventually drives the water onto our coastal zone. So here's a look at the wind field. We've been looking at this generally this morning out of the east, southeast, but as the system continues to lift its way northward, we're going to start to see some storm surge likely beginning around 6 a.m., 7 a.m., right around that sunrise time. Water is going to start to pile up first along areas like Everglades City, down through Marco Island. You can see that southerly wind pushing the water up against that shoreline. Same thing beginning for areas like Sanibel, beginning for the southern tip of the Cape Hayes Peninsula. Here's 1030, mid-morning. We're starting to see that storm surge pile up still along Sanibel, still along Marco Island, and now then on the uh, eastern side of the Cape Hayes Peninsula. As we head into 2 p.m. today, we'll start to see that really piling up across Fort Myers Beach at that point in time, along with then the northern portion of the Charlotte Harbor. So Port Charlotte around that time, you'll start to see that water pushing towards the shoreline. This is also, by the way, going to be around the time that a lot of us are seeing high tide. So we're looking at that water being pushed up at the same time that water levels are at their highest. The good news is though the storm surge forecast that we've been showing you, it bakes into account that high tide. So we've been showing you that range with high tide factored in. Today at 5.30, notice we start to see still ongoing storm surge, Charlotte Harbor. By that point in time, 4 or 5 o'clock, these winds are the southwest. That means it's the time for the Clusahatchee to start to see some storm surge at that point in time. We're going to start to see some storm surge along the river, ongoing for Estero Bay, Fort Myers Beach, and at that point in time, also Collier County, coastal Collier County. You'll continue to see that storm surge through about 11 p.m. Here's the system moving its way to the northeast. By that point in time, 11 p.m., it's likely out of our viewing area, but still on the back side of this, and still because winds are going to be Pretty strong at that point in time, even through the overnight time frame of tonight. Ongoing storm surge with those winds coming off the Gulf of Mexico from the west, it won't let that water to recede. So we're still going to have some high water storm surge the overnight time frame. I do think by lunchtime tomorrow, while we still have an onshore flow, we're going to start to at least see those winds lighten up a little bit more, uh, which would lead to at least some improvements. The water may stop and then we'll start to see that recede as that system pushes out towards the Atlantic Ocean. That'll be by Thursday evening. So there's that system, the eye about 87 miles south and west of Marco Island. For more on the wind gusts, I just talked about the storm surge. We, of course, also have that high wind potential. We're going to turn it over to meteorologist Nash Rhodes. Yeah, I want to time out the exact future wind gusts you can expect. And remember, this is just one particular model run. We could see wind gusts higher than the numbers you see here. We could see wind gusts slightly underneath the numbers you see here. These are just a basic guideline as to what you can expect as that center of Ian gets a little bit closer to the shoreline. Future wind gusts by about 10 a.m. especially begin to ramp up for our island zones. Notice Sanibel, potentially Boca Grande and Captiva. All of those locations experiencing wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour in this particular scenario as that eye would drift towards Sarasota counties, potentially out towards Charlotte County as well. You're seeing Englewood, North Port, Port Charlotte also exceed that 70 mile per hour wind gust mark. Sanibel at 95 in this particular simulation and it only increases as you travel north, so I would expect Captiva to be just a hair over that. Areas inland beginning to uptick in these in the wind gusts that we see as we approach that 430 PM time frame. Lehigh Acres, Fort Myers exceeding 70 miles per hour. Immokalee, Ave Maria, LaBelle, even out towards Glades County like you're seeing there. Wind gusts continuing to climb by 430 PM as we continue into this evening. Things shifting to the north still seeing those numbers continue to rise in Punta Gorda, Cape Coral, Fort Myers. This is bad news as far as wind gusts are concerned. And unfortunately, we will continue to see those carry over until late tonight into early tomorrow morning as that eye begins to drift farther to the north towards potentially Highlands County later on into the following morning. So those are the exact wind gusts you can expect as this system moves in and then moves out of here. Another thing I do want to show you right now is actually as this does proceed out of here completely, we should see those wind gusts be very similar to what we're already experiencing right now. 
30 mile per hour gusts we've seen round after round in Fort Myers Beach. Sustained winds right now in Sanibel are 22 miles per hour. Marco Island, we have seen a big uptick in where we were about 10, 15 minutes ago. Now not just into the 30s, but right at 34 mile per hour sustained winds recorded out there. And we will see that number continue to climb as Marco Island is currently the closest within the wink viewing area to the center of this storm. Pay attention to this very stout band that you're seeing here on the outer edge of Ian. This is the center. This is the eye where the impacts would be maximized. Lots of lightning in the northwest quadrant of that eye indicating a little bit of strengthening right now as it is pushing on shore. But this particular band I wanted to draw your attention to is drifting to the north and east and will be impacting sections of not just Marco Island, but Everglades City and the majority of Collier County here soon. Uh, Naples, this one's about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe even less than that as it is progressing rapidly to the north and west, you will be receiving more squally conditions, very rapid wind gusts, and if you are just receiving a light rain for now into western sections of Collier County, expect those wind gusts to ramp up significantly here momentarily. Farther to the north, we're still seeing some more of those outer bands tracking through the area. Fort Myers and Port Charlotte, you are seeing those on and off showers and thunderstorms. Another interesting observation, though, as these do push to the north and west through Fort Myers and Cape Coral, no lightning with these storms, even a little bit of rotation with some of them, but storms to the east have been the only ones we've seen tornado warnings on recently. Those are the ones that are now tracking through eastern sections of Hendry County and notice by Clewiston and Moorhaven. Lots of lightning out towards the Lake Okeechobee waterfront. That's showing that these cells mean business. They have staying power and we will be watching these as they track to the north and west and potentially continue that tornado threat that we have seen all morning long. One quick reminder, I know we've shown this graphic once every hour, but we'll continue to show it until Thursday through 5 a.m. We do have a tornado watch in place for all of South Florida. This goes as far north as Highlands and DeSoto counties and continues all the way farther south towards the southernmost extent of our viewing area and even progresses out into the Gulf of Mexico. As we have more updates on not just tornado watches and potential advisories, but also tornado warnings, we'll continue to keep you up to speed here at the Wink Weather Authority. All right, Nash, thank you so much. First responders in Texas are on there. I actually want to take you out live now to uh, Key West. This is a live look at Duval Street where you can see uh, a little bit there, the wind pushing that rain as that uh, Hurricane Ian made its way past Key West already. Uh, I was looking at another shot of Sloppy Joe's bar there. Uh, I saw they had their sandbags out. And I'm seeing videos and images of the storm surge uh, that is coming near the southernmost point there after the storm has moved through. They are also seeing that storm surge kind of uh, indicative of what we could see here in southwest Florida as Hurricane Ian makes its way here. It's really important to note, too, when you do see standing water, just don't go in it. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at this live video. You can see the waves there are crashing. People out there in Key West, they are taking selfies. Again, the waves, they are kicking up this video from yesterday after Hurricane Ian hit Cuba, it moved to the Keys. Now you can see people in knee deep stormy waters and boats at the marina. They're already taking a beating there. We've seen that in other shots. Again, you can see the wind whipping trees down right there. Again, absolutely not advised. Stay inside. Yeah, absolutely, Belinda. Good advice. Cape Coral Fire Department, they're putting out this advice on their Facebook page. You can dial 311 in uh, Cape Coral if you have any questions related to Hurricane Ian. They say for questions related to Hurricane Ian, please call the city's 311 call center by dialing 311. You can also dial 239-533-3000 or 239-574-0425. There may be a wait time, but your calls, your questions will be answered. Another video I wanted to show you real quick this is some uh, actual photos from Delray Beach. We were just talking about some of the destruction that we're seeing in other parts of the state. This is Delray Beach, just north of Pompano on the east side. You can see what they are seeing in these uh, late hours here. Some of the cars flipped. Uh, this is, again, from the same bands that are coming our way. This is what has just occurred there on the east side of Florida. You can see busted windows. Um, pretty scary, uh, some of these photos. Pull up some more here uh, again. Uh, it, that's the scary part about this, Taylor, is that this is really some of these bands are coming in overnight. It's yeah. dark out there. Nobody can really see this coming. And so for us to even uh, have some photos, uh, you know, at, at this late hour is pretty incredible. But man, when the sun comes up, 
My goodness, mm -hmm. uh, what, what are we going to deal with? I think that's what everybody's thinking. Yeah, definitely, Lisa. A lot of cleanup to come, no doubt, from this storm. And as Casey and Nash just mentioned, that threat for tornadoes for all of southwest Florida is until Thursday. Once Hurricane Ian is well out of its way uh, through other parts of Florida. So until then, you've got to be on alert. Make sure you have those emergency alerts on your phone to let you know uh, when those uh, potential tornadoes are coming to your area. Meantime, first responders in Texas are on their way here to help with storm recovery and that aftermath, similar to what Lisa just showed you. The Texas A&M Task Force 1 is deploying. They're one of several teams FEMA is counting on to help in the wake of Hurricane Ian. They are bringing two semi trucks full of equipment and several boats to help out. And we are keeping a very close eye on Hurricane Ian as it continues to make its way here to southwest Florida. Our team coverage will continue. Right, and one of the best things, at least seeing those people come in from Texas, mm -hmm. of course, we've seen the photos of all the Guard members who are standing by, but also we do want to add that the White House press secretary did send a note out through Twitter saying that actually our president had spoken with Governor Ron DeSantis about possible federal help coming again. So they, they did spoke and open up that communication yesterday. They did, so lots of federal state, even local resources. They are on standby, ready to prepare to help out once the storm passes. We're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. I'm Sharon. That smoking caused my throat cancer. My life isn't the same after all those surgeries and treatments. But walking every day makes me feel like myself again. Well, almost. Tobacco-Free Florida offers free nicotine patches to help start your quit journey. 1-877-YOU-CAN-NOW. Over the years, people have asked me, how did your firm get so big? The answer is simple. We won a lot. Why do you think some of these other firms are so much smaller? Maybe it's because not many people hire them. In this business, you grow by winning. As America's largest injury law firm, we have more lawyers than any other injury firm. Proof's in the pudding. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2022 Nissan Rogue, with a VC turbo engine and five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2022 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 1.9% financing for 36 months on 10 models, like Rogue, with best in class fuel economy. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. And good morning and welcome back. Well, we've been talking about this really for the past couple of days. Storm surge is going to be a big worry for us here in southwest Florida, especially now with the track that has shifted this farther off to the south and east. We're looking at a higher storm surge potential. We've been showing this map a lot. I will say and caution you that this is the reasonable worst case scenario. The National Hurricane Center, they use this map specifically to give it to emergency management officials uh, so they can make those decisions on things like evacuation. So the numbers you see here look a little bit scary. I will say uh, they do this to kind of encompass the entire range except for a 1 in 10 kind of event. So anything that would uh, be in this kind of range that's in this map, which is why some of these numbers look a little scary, but I want to break it down kind of our or rather uh, neighborhood by neighbor here, neighborhood here uh, just to kind of give you a closer look in. 
uh, to each and every individual location. And if you want to look at this by yourself, the National Hurricane Center website, just type in nhc.com into Google, uh, into your web browser. You can pull up the same exact map and zoom into exactly where your house is to show you that your storm surge reasonable uh, storm surge uh, rather potential here. Reasonable worst case scenario should say storm surge. But this is what we base our evacuation orders off of, what the officials base their evacuation orders off of. This is Charlotte County and you can see it for the mouth there of the Peace, the Mayaka River and the Charlotte Harbor, those areas that are highlighted in red. Those are where we're expecting the highest storm surge, and that is exactly why we have had evacuation orders in that area, because this is to be taken seriously, especially with the new forecast track that does project the system uh, to move right across perhaps Charlotte Harbor as a major hurricane that is going to be heavily increasing our storm surge potential. So zooming in here, let's take you first to some of those northern areas. This is Port Charlotte in Murdoch. You can see Murdoch, we're looking at about one foot plus, one to three feet. Areas in orange, that includes Port Charlotte as we zoom in here. Port Charlotte area, that is the uh, area in orange and also area in yellow. That's three to six, that area in orange indicating six to about nine feet of storm surge. And storm surge is the water rise above sea level, it does factor in high tide. What it doesn't factor in is your elevation. So you need to know that however high you are above sea level, subtract that amount from that forecast storm surge. And that would be roughly about the amount of water that you could see on essentially your lawn, basically. Uh, Meadow Park Elementary, you are in that orange to red shading. That means six to about nine feet plus. We've got that for Charlotte Beach Bar. You can see those areas in red right there showing six to nine feet plus and Grassy Point Estates. As we move over to areas like the Cape Hayes Peninsula, Rotunda, you currently have areas in yellow. You also have that stretch of areas, uh, that little red kind of stripe there that's near Oakland Hills in Pine Valley that is indicating storm surge possible of over nine feet. Coral Creek Airport, six to nine feet plus. Let's zoom out here and look over towards areas uh, like Punta Gorda. And they currently are also dealing with, in that Punta Gorda downtown area, we're talking about six to nine feet plus. Charlotte High School, six to nine feet plus. Farther south, let's take you into Lee County now. Zoom out here a little bit, give you kind of a broader picture. We have a lot of red in Lee County. You'll notice it's especially along the Caloosahatchee River, which we are expecting to experience a lot of storm surge along with areas like Sanibel, Pine Island Sound, and also Pine Island. So a closer look in, let's go to Cape Coral first. That southern tip is going to be experiencing the highest amount of storm surge. So Cape Elementary, you can see it there. We've got Cape Coral Yacht Club, if we zoom in, there's Cape Coral Yacht Club. You can see that on the map behind me. Let's zoom in over and go to Tarpon Point. They currently are looking at six to nine feet of storm surge or over for those areas in red. That's the plus, the over nine feet, I should say. If you live close to Trafalgar Elementary, you're looking at the range of three to six feet plus some of those areas in orange. That's the six to nine foot range. Pine Island Center, you're looking at anywhere between that red area showing uh, what is currently nine foot plus. That's right as you travel across from Matt Lachey on that road. Pine Island Center, you're in that yellow to orange shading. Pine Island Elementary more towards the orange shade indicating six to nine foot storm surge possible, reasonable, worst case scenario. But keep in mind, we're preparing for the worst case scenarios. This could be a very, very situ serious situation. Fort Myers Beach, nine foot plus, all that area in red. Estero Island, all in red. Lover's Key, all in red. Let's take you over now to areas like Fort Myers, downtown in Lee County. There's Pagefield Airport for reference point. That is in the yellow, the orange, blue, just off to the west, uh, east of that on East Airport Road. 
and that's about three to six foot storm surge possible. It's the areas that are along the Clusatchee River in Fort Myers that will have the highest potential of seeing most of the storm surge. There is Edison and Ford Winter Estates. You can see the right there along State Road 82. That is six to nine foot storm surge. Anything that's nearer to the river than that, that is the nine foot storm surge range. Let's travel into the Tice area. Rainbow Groves, Tice, there's Orange River Elementary. The red is where we're, we're expecting the highest amount of storm surge. There's New York Drive. The yellow indicating three to six foot storm surge. Piedmont Gardens in the yellow area. Taking you down through Collier County. As we just, again, and you can go to, if you want to know, I know I'm not hitting on every single area, but if you want to go to your specific neighborhood to figure out your reasonable worst case scenario storm surge, National Hurricane Center website, you just scroll down. There is a option for Hurricane Ian, and it's going to be one of the little tabs, uh, the little boxes that's right below uh, the stats on Hurricane Ian. Okay, down through Collier County. Here is an overview. I want to give that to you right now. There is Golden Gate. We've got Naples, Laley Resort, Golden Gate Estates. We also have Bay Belt Beach and Pelican Bay. Zooming into Vanderbilt Beach, you can see the orange, the red, six to nine foot storm surge there. Some areas looking at in those little canal ways where you see the red over a nine feet of storm surge or over. There's Pelican Bay. Looking at three to six foot storm surge in yellow areas that are just off to the east, uh, west of Pelican Bay, excuse me, nine foot of storm surge, nine feet of storm surge or over that. This is a look at Park Shore. You are in that six to nine foot storm surge range. And as we look over towards areas like Naples High School, Naples Zoo, Lake Park Elementary, Lake Park, we're talking about a range of three to six feet in those areas in yellow, the orange six to nine feet, the areas that will be experiencing likely the highest storm surge in this particular area would be Naples Zoo up through that area of Golden Gate Parkway. There's NCH Baker Hospital right there. Naples Pier. You're looking at about nine feet of storm surge for exactly those coastal areas. It decreases as you go inland. Aqualane Shores, you're in the orange, you're in the red. And as we go down towards Keyweight and Island, Isles of Capri, you're in the red there. That's where you could see a possibly nine feet of storm surge over. Same thir uh, for Port of the Islands. 10,000 Islands, Everglades City, those areas that are very close to those low-lying regions of the Collier County coast. And I know this is a lot, but again, if you want to check out exactly your neighborhood, there's a lot to look at here. You can go over to the National Hurricane Center website. If you are in those evacuation zones that were asked to evacuate, this is what they base that off of. It is science, which is why we highly urge you, if you are ordered to evacuate, to leave now you still have some time, the weather right now, some rain, some wind, nothing you can't handle, and you can just travel even just a few miles inland could help and get you out of that evac evacuation zone. We're going to have more live radar updates coming up on this system and, of course, much more on Ian, but we're going to I'm going to toss it over to uh, Taylor and Belinda right now. Casey, thank you for breaking down all those specific areas. Right now, we are moving to some video brand new to us. This is storm damage in Miami. So you saw those trees. That is completely covering a white vehicle there. If you can make out that front bumper. Again, it takes strong winds to do that to break down a tree. You're seeing it pretty much from the root or either where it broke in half. We know that these are close to homes. That black vehicle just covered there again. 
This is one of the reasons we have been urging you to take shelter. Be sure you're hunkered down. Mm -hmm. We are in that tornado threat as well. I've been keeping an eye on the uh, local media there over on the East Coast. Haven't seen any reports of any injuries so far, which is the good news. But here are some new pictures also showing debris across a parking lot at a shopping center in mm -hmm. Pembroke Pines. Again, this just last night after storms hit the area, uh, catching those outer bands of Hurricane Ian. And last time we checked, we had very few outages, but those numbers are going up right now. Let's see here. We have a few. This is from uh, LCEC. You can see Charlotte has 640 outages. Lee is at 1,040. Collier 430. Um, th if you bring this up on your phone, you can actually look and see what outages are happening around you. Uh, the green dots indicate about 11 to 50 outages. The purple dots are just one in one particular outage. So we're seeing just a few homes that are without power in Cape Coral and then a few clusters here north of Immokalee and then here in North Fort Myers we're seeing a few clusters of folks without power in those areas. If we go down just a little bit to Naples uh, we're seeing a few down in Marco Island uh, but nothing nothing too bad yet and for FPL they really are showing no outages at this point. Uh, a few multiple outages in some of the barrier, barrier islands but for Cape Coral, Fort Myers, uh, Charlotte County area, so far power is good right now. And we do know the largest electric companies in our area have addressed this saying, you know, we are ready, we know, we are braced for this, but you could be without power for some time again, should uh, something happen with the generator, something like that. So we will keep that up to date over the coming days. Now, Charlotte County, they are working to keep you safe from Hurricane Ian's path. Wink News reporter Zach Oliveri has the latest from the Charlotte County Emergency Operations Center. Ever since we first got here to the Emergency Operations Center here in Charlotte County, we've started to see the storm pick up a little bit. The rain's picking up, starting to come in sideways. We could feel some of the wind. We can even hear some of it outside occasionally. And the biggest thing, the biggest message that I've gotten from public information officers that I've spoken with since we arrived here is that people need to take the storm very seriously to stay inside don't go out in this storm, and especially because there are some people who didn't follow the evacuation, and they're in some serious danger, especially because first responders won't be able to come get them. They're going to be pulled off the road once the wind hits 40 miles per hour, and then once that comes in, they won't be able to help you if there is an emergency. They will be able to go back out once that recedes, and then they'll be then Public Works will go out as well to assess the damage along with Charlotte County Fire to with chainsaws to clear up any road debris. And we're going to have a latest update from Charlotte County officials at 10 a.m. this morning. We will be at that press conference to bring you the absolute latest information on what Ian poses as a threat for Charlotte County. In Charlotte County, Zach Oliveri, Wink News. Thank you, Zach. Of course, a lot of folks are standing by ready to help as soon as the storm moves through. We're in the beginning phases, right? So once that storm moves through, that's when all the helpers are needed, like these ladies right here. These are nurses in Sarasota. They're staying up the next couple of nights to take care of many loved ones. You can see someone's mom actually posted this photo. It's pretty good. You can see a little sleepover party that they're having there. And we hear that there are nurses actually doing this at Health Park as well, right here in our area. So thankful for our nurses, our medical professionals, our first responders that are waiting for this storm to move through, knowing the impacts that it will bring and ready to step in and help whoever they can as soon as they can. Uh, pretty incredible that we have these kind of people in Southwest Florida for us. Taylor, Belinda. Absolutely, Lisa. <laughs> and we've been getting several updates from Lee Health and NCH as they navigate through this uh, severe storm as well. We know Lee Health operating as normal. They do want to stress they are not a designated hur uh, hurricane shelter. You cannot go there to seek shelter. They are there though if you do have an emergency. And that's really important to note because there are several of those shelters listed in Southwest Florida, but we do have to think about all those nurses and doctors. Any staff member who is working, they probably have to hunker down at the hospital. They probably can't go home. Absolutely, just like us, they're away from their family, uh, trying to do the best. We're here to be a reassuring voice throughout the early morning hours as we prepare you for Hurricane Ian now making its way to Southwest Florida. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this break.
This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. It's a penalty to pay more than a dime. One dime down. At Kia of Cape Coral, 33 acres, new and certified pre-owned. Plus, we're the pre-order pros. Order now and get it right off the truck. KiaofCC.com. You gotta get it. You gotta go. <laughs> I'm about to pass it to you. I got it. Okay, pass it back, man. It feels too good. I'm keeping it. <laughs> The Neighborhood, tonight at 11.30 on CW. Our middle son left to go to work in a twice deported illegal. Ran into him and he killed him. This is what happens when we have open borders. We were able to go and meet with Governor DeSantis. He said, I want to hear your son's story. And to see the compassion in his eyes, he wanted to make sure other lives were protected. He's been very strong on safety. He's been very strong on law and order. He has made our state one of the safest states to be in. There's no greater leader than Governor DeSantis. That's good. Since my mother got cancer from smoking, I've learned a lot of things. Like how to help her out of bed, how to help her in the bath, how to keep track of her medication, and how to keep her spirits up. Sleep well. I love you. you. Tobacco-Free Florida offers free nicotine patches to help start your quit journey. 1-877-YOU-CAN-NOW. Do you want some more? Wait till you see me on the downhill. <laughs> see you at home. Real luxury, real confidence. Enjoy with the advanced safety features of a Lexus ES. Get 2.99% APR financing on the 2022 ES350. Love is treating all our guests like family. Love is fixing the vehicle right the first time. Love is offering price transparency on every Subaru. Love is respecting your time. Love is helping our community. Subaru of Naples loves our customers and community. Come by for exceptional offers like 2.9% APR on all 2022 and 23 models with no market adjustments. Subaru of Naples, one mile south of Pine Ridge at Goodlet Frank and Solana Road. Searching everywhere for great prices on appliances? No, you have better things to do. Besides, Good Deals has it for less. And we have many items in stock, despite shortages everywhere. So get in here, get a deal, save your money. It's a penalty to pay more than a dime. One dime down. At Kia of Cape Coral, 33 acres, new and certified pre-owned. Plus, we're the pre-order pros. Order now and get it right off the truck. KiaofCC.com. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. And we are continuing to track Hurricane Ian. And as of the latest advisory that we received at 2 a.m., we are tracking Ian with sustained winds of 120 miles per hour. That has remained stable over the past few hours. We've noted a slight increase in pressure, which typically means that it's weakening. But the only reason we likely saw that was because that eye wall was being replaced and it has completed that eye wall replacement cycle, meaning that it will likely strengthen from here. And that should be reflected in the next advisory that we do receive. A quick check in with the Saffir Simpson scale. This is the gold standard for the exact rating that we assign to a hurricane, or at least the category you could say. Currently, 120 mile per hour sustained winds puts it squarely in that category three scale in the devastating category of the Saffir Simpson scale. Just 10 more mile per hour strength uh, of strengthening could bump it up into that category four level. But for now, we will keep a close eye on the sustained winds on the outer edges of that eye wall where the maximum impacts of this storm are held. The latest satellite imagery showing that cleared eye still at least visible there on satellite as this is drifting to the north and east and landfall will likely happen during the daytime here somewhere likely in southwest Florida. A quick check in with what we're seeing as far as the size of Ian. Ian much larger as far as the impacts and scale of this storm relative to Charlie and uh, is continuing to grow as it has cleared out that eye wall and will or is fully expected by the National Hurricane Center to still strengthen into a category four storm moments before landfall. Irma a little bit bigger, but Ian a very large wind field and prolific rain producer still expected to grow before it does push on shore. And
and we're already starting to see the impacts of those sustained wind speeds. A quick check in with what we're seeing along the coastline. Some spots like Marco Island already uh, recording sustained winds of over 30 miles per hour for now. We've watched this number slowly start to creep up over the past few hours and it'll likely continue to do so as that eye will be directly offshore Collier County first and then push up the shoreline towards coastal Lee and then eventually coastal Charlotte counties if it does get that far to the north before it does move on shore. Areas inland seeing those sustained winds drop into the teens in some spots right now. That won't be the case by this afternoon as those maximum impacts will be felt for now wind gusts. So these are temporary wind speeds that we get measured from time to time from our local sensor data still showing some wind gust at if not exceeding 40 miles per hour like we're seeing there in Punta Gorda just updating live on air at 45 mile per hour wind gust locally. This is also as I mentioned a prolific rain producer. These outer bands from these systems are known for being very efficient at dumping a lot of rain in a very short amount of time. That's why storm surge isn't always just the only impact. Uh, you know salt water being the impact but also fresh water falling from the sky. You can see those bands carving out these very uh, stout uh, rainfall totals over the past 24 hours leading into portions of Hendry and Collier counties especially. Expect these rainfall totals to slowly creep up farther to the north and you'll see spots like uh, Highlands and Charlotte County start to bump up those rainfall totals locally as well. One thing I do want to stress with this is these rainfall total estimates are from our radar. These are not confirmed but we get a good ballpark from our Wake Live Doppler 3X as to what people are seeing right now. Over seven inches of rainfall likely into sections of, I'd say, northern Collier County, right on the border of Hendry, farther to the west towards Fort Myers. Only about two inches of rainfall over the past 24 hours. Those rainfall totals quickly ramping up, though, as you drop south into Collier County, between five to seven inches of rain locally there. I want to show you sky camera right now with what we're seeing in Fisherman's Village out towards Punta Gorda. Those clouds zooming across the sky as they are quickly wrapping around that center of Ian as it does approach land. Landfall. We're going to even see those clouds pick up in speed and the intensity that these squalls do push through will also ramp up as it does approach the coastline. Winx Live Doppler 3X showing that in Punta Gorda they did just have one of those bands push through moments ago. You're seeing those yellows there in a straight line. These pushing through Port Charlotte right now, Rotunda, you're getting some gusty winds and heavy rainfall from those bands as well. More bands are on the way though as we zoom out here and in fact more stout rain bands a little bit closer to Ian Center. We're not quite at that eye wall but still some of these bands look awfully stout and mean. Lightning within these as well and you can expect some very high wind gusts as these do push on shore into Collier County here relatively soon. We're already seeing Naples and Marco Island actually getting the uh, outer sides of this band and I'd be keeping a close eye on those wind gusts here shortly in Marco Island in Naples as those could of course exceed that 35 mile per hour mark that we saw moments ago as those wind gusts will eventually rapidly exceed likely over 50 miles per hour by the late morning as that eye gets closer and closer to our coastline. Winx Live Doppler 3X also pinpointing some more thunderstorms to the north and east with another stout band. These uh, looking like they're trying to rotate a little bit more than the others. We have previously had tornado warnings drifting into sections of Hendry and Glades counties. For now, it looks like no warnings, but still a little bit of rotation with some of these, and we'll be keeping a close eye on any of these if they do eventually get warned. For now, tornado watches do exist not just for southwest Florida, but all of south Florida. These in effect until 5 a.m. on Thursday, so a very long period of time. The uh, outer bands of uh, hurricanes are known to be, again, prolific producers of not just rainfall, but also tornadoes. You know, historically, Katrina uh, produced roughly 50, almost 60 tornadoes in its lifespan as it pushed inland on its outer bands. Uh, so something to keep a close eye on will be the tornado threat moving forward. I do think that threat will be maximized later on this morning, and we'll start to see those tornado warnings shift from just into Collier and Hendry counties to eventually farther to the north into Highlands, uh, Charlotte, and eventually spots uh, towards Glades County, you know, spots that have been spared from the majority of these tornado warnings thus far. I'll continue to keep you updated on these tornado watches and warnings, but for now, back to you. All right, Nash, thank you so much. I want to take you out live down to Fisherman's Village in Punta Gorda. This is a live look there that kind of gives you an idea of the conditions there right now. If we can drop the super below so I can show you that uh, the palm tree at the bottom of your screen. You see the winds moving through there. Obviously the rain mm -hmm. on the screen as well. Nash just said as he was live on air, a recorded wind gust there in Punta Gorda 
of 45 miles per hour. So we are keeping an eye on the conditions all across Southwest Florida. And we hope you're joining us here live on air, but we know at some point today, uh, many are likely to lose power as Hurricane Ian uh, makes its way here to Southwest Florida. So you, you can also join us on the radio as well. We are simulcasting on 96.9 Wink FM, as well as 101.5 Wave FM. And then if you are able to have a charged uh, cellular device, maybe an iPhone or an iPad of some sort, we are also streaming our newscast live on our Facebook page so you can check in there with us as well. We're going back out now to our team of reporters who are scattered throughout mm -hmm. Southwest Florida, keeping an eye on those conditions. Uh, Sanibel Island, one of the very first places evacuated yesterday when Lee County announced Zone A, those most vulnerable to hurricanes, uh, the impacts of it, advising people there to leave. And I'm glad you brought that up because their city council on Monday night had approved this a local emergency. Then it went to voluntary mm -hmm. and then mandatory. That's what we saw with the rest of those zone A in Lee County. Again, mandatory evacuations there. So Wink News reporter Claire Galt, she is on Sanibel Island. Claire, what are you seeing this morning? I'm out here on the balcony of my hotel. It's a pretty good spot. I can see everything, monitor it, and give you guys updates, but I'm still safe under this covering here. Now, Jack, if you'll follow me over here, I want to show them. You can see these palm trees sort of swaying back and forth. As you can expect, the rain is picking up, the wind is picking up, especially the wind. It's really getting stronger as these hours go on. Now, there's not too many people in this hotel and there's not too many people on the island, but I did run into one family earlier this morning. They were checking into my hotel. They told me they left their home in Cape Coral, packed up their family of five and their puppy and came all the way here to Sanibel. Now, they said they don't necessarily think that the storm will be any better here in Sanibel, but they do think that they'll have a height advantage because of the hotel. I think it's going to hit just the same, but the elevation is definitely going to be better. Being higher up, you're not going to be scared to be flooded out of your house. So that was the biggest thing, especially with a family of five. Yeah. Now, it's still too dark to see any further behind me, but I am standing in front of water and I went down to that water earlier kind of checked it out it was getting pretty choppy and as I'm watching as the hours go by it seems to be getting a little bit choppier but I'll keep bringing you updates as the hours go on live in Sanibel Claire Galt Link News well, right now, several areas in Southwest Florida are under evacuation orders we have bring, been bringing you that up to the date to the minute information every time it's released. Absolutely, and, and so we are getting a lot of calls into our newsroom. When I was sitting back there earlier, our poor assignment uh, desk editor, Rob, and <laughs> just taking phone call after phone call, people wondering what evacuation zone they are in still. So we want to go now to Wink News anchor Lisa Hudson in the studio with us with a look at all of those evacuations. Lisa, can you kind of break it down for us area by area? Absolutely. Everything in red, you should be gone. Absolutely. Everything in red. This is zone A. So this is right next to the water. Anything on Sanibel, Captiva, anything along the Caloosahatchee. If you're in those areas, you definitely need to get out. Now, zone B, C, that's when we go to orange and yellow. I'm focusing mainly on Cape, Cape Coral right now because I know that's kind of a, a, a confusing area for people. Am I in the evacuated zone or not? Now, all of zone A, B, and select parts of C are under evacuation orders in Lee County. So that means everything in red, everything in orange, and some of these yellow uh, places as well. So let me tell you exactly where this is. If you look at this line right here, the dividing line between the red and orange, this is Del Prado, okay? And then Veterans Memorial Parkway, this is what separates the orange from the yellow. So B from C is Veterans. If you live south, put, put it this way, if you live south of Veterans Parkway, uh, going towards the water here, you need to be out. Um, anything above that, you should be pretty good. Now, the, the real line in Cape is Kismet Parkway. Usually once you uh, get there or Northeast Pine Island Road, for the most part, if you are north of those areas, you should be fine in other zones. Now, let me zoom, zoom this back in, see here if we can play with it a little bit more. Oh, there we go. And kind of see some of these other areas. Now we're in just, this is Old Burnt Store Road again, all in red there. Let's see. And then if we move up just a little, 
Ah, we're kind of playing with this map. It's got a, it's kind of worn out. It's been used a lot today. We've been paying attention to this um, religiously that throughout this storm. You can see down here, Naples, again, anything along the river or anything along the Gulf, absolutely, you're in that zone A. Uh, and then down here a little bit more, the orange Ever Everglades City, you need to be out up here at Port Charlotte. Anything along the Peace River, anything along Charlotte Harbor, you should definitely be out. These again, uh, you can look at this map for yourself. You can actually put in your address and it will tell you exactly uh, where you need to be. Again, this is Charlotte Harbor. Anything in red, orange, you need to be out. Part of that yellow, you need to uh, definitely pay attention. But go to Know Your Zone. Uh, this is floridadisaster.maps. Uh, and you can put in your address, make sure you check. But if you're close to the water, it's best to just drive inland. And we're really closing on that window, Taylor, Belinda. I mean, if you're not out by now, you, you really need to get out because that window, you're gonna be stuck. Exactly, Lisa, thank you so much. And for people who may be looking for that map, we do have a link to it on winknews.com. It's under the story with the headline, Know your Southwest Florida hurricane evacuation zone and path. You can find everything you need to know right there. Uh, we want to turn now to a downtown Fort Myers. Again, another area susceptible to seeing some of that storm surge because it is right along the Caloosahatchee. Uh, I got to say, when I saw pictures yesterday of and I drove downtown and saw the businesses boarded up. I mean, that's something I have not seen here in my few years here in Southwest Florida. Uh, that's when I finally realized, OK, we are serious. This is happening. I want to go now to Wink News reporter Andriana Shepard, live in downtown Fort Myers for us. Uh, Andriana, what are the conditions looking like there now? You know, every time I talk to you guys, the conditions change right now. Still not looking too bad. An hour ago, everything was very windy. The rain was coming very hard at a sideways, but now just straight down kind of sprinkles and kind of no wind. No wind at all. Uh, it's not too bad out here, but we do see some of these businesses boarded up here. We see these uh, metal kind of shutters hanging down over near the city of Palms parking garage. Other than that, weather conditions aren't too bad. There is some puddling going on in the middle of the streets, but still nothing terrible at the moment. It's very calm, very light. No one's downtown right now. Everything's very, very calm at the moment. Live in Fort Myers, Andriana Shepard, Wink News. All right, Andriana, thank you. Turning now to a little bit more south in Collier County, want to go to Vanderbilt Beach. That's where we find Wink News reporter Liz Byro, who has been uh, keeping an eye on how things are looking right there. I think we have Liz live to tell us more about uh, what is it looking like out there, Liz? Mm -hmm. And so since I checked in with you guys first around midnight, the wind has just only strengthened. You can see behind me, I mean, the trees are just blowing. You can hear the whistling. You can hear the howling of the wind. And it has just only been getting louder. So right now, behind these buildings is the golf side. But on the other side of our hotel room is the lagoon side. And the wind just felt stronger over there. There was bursts of wind coming in through the screened in area and with that bringing rain. Now, I did also attempt to go downstairs, and like I said, attempt. The wind was just too strong. It was hard to stay up stable, so we did head back upstairs. But when I was down there, I did get a look at the lagoon, the water, and it was very choppy. And so most of the people living around the lagoon have their boats elevated up. And from that, I was able to gauge that water level. And so that distance between the bottom of people's boats and the top of the water has shortened, indicating that the water level is rising. So I'll keep you updated on all those conditions. Live in Naples, Liz Byro, Wink News. Well, right now we are, uh, you know, we've we've been out at Vanderbilt Beach mm -hmm. for a while. We'll actually say Taylor Wirt, she was out there, and this is a really note on how conditions can change quickly. She was out there for her live shot, I think around six. Then by that seven o'clock mm -hmm. when she was there, she had actually moved inside of her resort there, uh, inside of the hotel, because again, they didn't feel like conditions were safe because those wind speeds, they were picking up. But right now, Verizon, they are providing unlimited calls, texting and data for their customers. Again, this offer begins tomorrow and it runs through October 4th. Accounts with those billing addresses uh, in the following Florida counties. That's going to include Charlotte, DeSoto, Hardy, Hillsborough, Lee, Manatee, Pinellas, Polk, Sarasota. And Taylor, one of the things about this, 
all of those, all those counties, I believe at some point have been under that watch mm -hmm. or warning that they could be seeing some significant damage. So again, if that indeed is why Verizon is doing this, that's great. Absolutely. And as we uh, continue to monitor Hurricane Ian, our uh, team of meteorologists are tracking any uh, fine tuning to the uh, track of this here. We're going to let them analyze that data and we'll come back after a quick break. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Wink Weather is sponsored by Roof RX. Call now for your storm estimate. It's Ford Truck Month. Now's the time to get our best deals on the full Ford lineup of trucks. Get after it. Get to Ford Truck Month. Don't miss 2.9% financing for 72 months and no payments for 90 days on the 2022 F-150. When a storm comes through, I talk to my son and my daughter and I say, listen, dad's going to be away. And they understand that. They understand dad's going to, to help other people. What are we trying to do for the people is give them a lot of hope. They're seeing their neighborhoods coming on. We're not done until everybody's power is restored. For my younger daughter, you know, it's, it's tough. I hope that she goes back one day and says, you know what, dad did what he could for the community and this made a difference. When people need our help, we answer the call. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head-up display. <laughs> They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Pay no interest on Buick SUV models. Buick. Ranked number one brand in the industry for new vehicle quality. The radical left will destroy America if we don't stop them. They indoctrinate children, try to turn boys into girls. They allow illegal aliens and drugs to flood into our country. And if you speak out, they ban you on social media and they call you a racist. Congresswoman Val Demings is for all of this. She votes with Pelosi 100% of the time. I'm Marco Rubio, and I approve this message because I was raised by people who lost their country. I'm not gonna let us lose ours. Day or night, your loved ones show up for you. At HCA Florida Healthcare, we do too. Because you're the center of our family, Florida's largest healthcare family. And you'll feel it in everything we do. HCA Florida Healthcare, we show up for you. If you're looking to do your kitchen or bath and you're interviewing contractors, what should you ask? What should you know about materials and craftsmanship? Do they do the work themselves or do they hire others? And what about a warranty? Bottom line, who you choose makes all the difference. So go to our website for a copy of 10 things you better ask before you choose a contractor. Our name, by the way, is Cornerstone, and we love tough questions. It's Ford SUV season. Get great deals on Ford SUVs like Ford Explorer and Bronco Sport. See your local Ford dealer today. Don't miss 2.9% financing on a 2022 Explorer, Edge, or Escape. And your local Ford dealer will add an additional 500 bonus cash. We now return to Wink News special continuing live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Thank you for joining us. Now, Wink News reporter Annette Montgomery, she is live right now on Fort Myers Beach. Annette, you have been there all morning. What are you seeing right now? Well, Belinda, I can't only tell you what I'm seeing, but I can actually tell you what I'm feeling. It is very, very windy. I'm actually having to hold my hat on my head because it keeps flying off. I'm going to have my photographer pan to show you the light that's moving right now. You can actually just see the wind coming from that direction, which is closest to the beach. But I'm going to have him also pan to show you this side, and this is what we've been seeing since we've been here since 1230. Just trees blowing, that flag blowing, downed palms. Now, I told you all during the last hour, for the first time, I actually saw two cars on the this road. I don't know if they were evacuating, but since that time, I have not seen anyone else on this road. So no traffic, no roadways, but I'm going to have my photographer pan down to show you the ponding that we're seeing. Again, for our radio viewers, it's still not over my feet yet, over my rain boots, but it is expanding just the amount of water. So just a few things to note. I know you all were going over the evacuation zone. So just to get perspective, this is evacuation zone A. This is Fort Myers Beach zone A. So this is one of the first areas around 
9 a.m. yesterday morning that Lee County officials issued a mandatory evacuation order for. And you can see from this wind, you can see how I'm being pushed by the wind, just how important that evacuation order was and why leaders thought this was an area that needed to be evacuated. Now I'm going to take you closer to the beach. We're going to go slow because the, the mic has been cutting out, and I think it's just because it's so windy and so choppy out here. But we are seeing high tide, and with this wind now, we are definitely seeing this water pushing a lot, lot more. So definitely, like I said earlier last hour, this is the time to get out if you're on Fort Myers Beach. Now, a few things to note if you're just checking in. We did drive from Vanderbilt Beach around midnight to Fort Myers Beach, and on our way here, all of the gas stations were boarded up. They had um, wood on the doors, on the windows. The gas pumps had bags on them, so we have yet to see any gas stations open. Another thing to note, if you are evacuating now, make sure to drive slow because, as you all have said, once winds reach a certain speed, they are dangerous. Now, I know when we last checked in with Nash, he said around 30 to 35 miles per hour winds here on Fort Myers Beach, so definitely getting to dangerous levels to even be on the road. So definitely, if you're driving on the road, drive slow. Our car was hydroplaning, and that was earlier before we saw all this downpour, so I'm pretty sure the roads might have a little more water on them now, so definitely drive slow. But as you can see, I'm, I'm just showing you all, you can see the wind. The wind is coming. The wind has been consistent. What hasn't been consistent is the rain. It's, it's been a little bit spotty, so at times it's really, really raining. At times it's not. But the wind is the one thing that has not stopped. It's just constant, constant, constant. It's definitely increasing. So again, I know Casey made the mention that if people want to get out, they, they should do it before sunrise because that's when things might get worse. So definitely, I would say, again, this is the time to get out of here on Fort Myers Beach because it is pretty windy. It is pretty rainy. But we'll stay here as long as we can and bring you all any new updates on air and online. Live in Fort Myers Beach, Annette Montgomery, Wink News. Yeah, and what she's saying is certainly all correct. If you have had those evacuation orders issued for your area, you still have some time, I would say, by about sunrise. Things are really going to start to deteriorate across the area. I highly urge you to get out now if you have not yet evacuated in those areas that have been under mandatory evacuations. This is not something to mess around with. This is quite literally, and this is not to scare you, just to prepare you for those, again, that have not evacuated and were ordered to do so, that this should be a worst case scenario here for Southwest Florida with the kind of track we're seeing and with the kind of strength we're seeing with the system. So take this storm very seriously. We have 120 mile per hour winds, the 3 a.m. advisory. Really haven't seen much change. Pressure remains the same, 953 millibars. Motion remains the same to the north northeast at 10 miles per hour, uh, where we are anticipating this northward trend to continue as we head into the rest of the day. You can see that on a satellite. Uh, we have a little bit of an eye wall replacement. Now starting to see that eye kind of expand yet again. An eye wall replacement cycles, typically the diameter collapses and the new eye then begins to expand. And we're beginning to see that and are expecting additional strengthening over the very warm waters just off of our coast as it gets closer to our area. So forecast cone, this was issued at 11 p.m. last night, where unfortunately we did happen to see another shift to the south and east. Right now, we are anticipating landfall very close to Sanibel, Captiva. This is going to be sometime this afternoon. I would expect around 3, 4, 5 p.m. taking it up through Pine Island, into portions of far northwestern Lake County, Charlotte Harbor, Punta Gorda, and eventually through DeSoto County. Still as a Category 3 hurricane, this is at 8 p.m. this evening. And then the good news is we are expecting a little bit of a faster motion, at least compared to what we had forecast yesterday. By Thursday evening, it should be out over the Atlantic at that point in time. The system, it continues to swirl now about 90 or so miles to the west-southwest of Marco Island. Notice it's beginning to move northward with that motion a little bit now getting a bit more parallel to the coast. And as it continues to and starts to parallel our coastal line, that's when we're going to start to really feel some of these winds pick up. We've begun to really see some heavy bands of rain now track into Marco Island coastal zones of Collier County. This is a look at the wavering that we've seen with this eye, and we could see some additional kind of slight wobbles as we head into about the next few hours. Current track, though, has it to the north and east. I will say we've seen a little bit of a northerly motion with this. We'll see if that happens to continue. But right now, the current track, again, there is a close-up look at that. 
right through portions of the Charlotte Harbor, up through Punta Gorda, and out into DeSoto County. That eye wall is about 32 miles in diameter. If this eye does pass over you, you'll be looking at likely some blue sky by sometime late today. Don't be fooled though, that blue sky will not be lasting because you've got the second eye wall to make your way through. So let's time this all out for today. Here's a look at 5 a.m. this morning. This is fairly close to where it is currently, but it's going to be a bit more uh, parallel to our coastal line. It starts to work its way northward. We see those driving bands of rain, these feeder bands that are going to be bringing some gusty winds and the potential for tornadoes. 9 a.m., this is for 9 a.m. this morning as we head into what should be about the next five, six hours. We start to see the winds pick up and notice the wind direction. It's pushing up against areas like Marco Island, Everglades City, Chukaluski, your storm surge threat begins there. From there, we'll continue to see those winds then begin to shift more out of the south for portions of Sanibel and up through areas like the Charlotte Harbor and near the Cape Hayes Peninsula and then out towards Cayo Costa. Winds really increasing at that point in time. This is noon where it's going to start to parallel Lee County. There's the eye wall. This is going to begin to push on shore here as we head towards 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. You're going to be within the strongest winds at that point in time, 3 through about 5 p.m. Charlotte County, Lee County. It's going to be loud. You're going to hear that. And if you have storm shutters on, you won't be able to see it, but it is going to sound very loud. That is the worst part of the storm passing over you. And then begins to work its way inland. We've got ongoing storm surge starting in Charlotte County, starting up the Clusachi River at about 3, 4, 5 p.m. This is going to be right around the time of high tide as well. So that's going to add a little bit to that storm surge. We'd rather have this happen at low tide, but unfortunately with high tide happening right around the time of landfall, that is why we're saying worst case scenario situation here in Southwest Florida. I continues to push on shore 530. We've got some strong winds beginning through DeSoto County, continuing out through Charlotte County, down through Lee County. And even it continues to track northward, here's 9 p.m., begins to enter and pull away from our viewing area. We still have that onshore flow that's going to be bringing still that potential for some storm surge. It's going to prevent those waters from receding and going back out. So we continue with an ongoing storm surge threat. Tonight, I would expect at least some of the rain to start to let up with most of it lifting northward. This is Thursday morning as we wake up tomorrow. Still going to be looking at some gusty winds, still an onshore flow that's still going to allow for that water, or rather prevent that water from receding. I would expect improvements beginning Thursday night. Winds are going to start to lighten up at that point in time, which should at least improve not only the storm surge, but of course the wind threat. And then we'll continue to see that eventually out towards the Atlantic Ocean as it continues to pull away a little bit faster to the north and east. For more on specific impacts of what we should see here locally, including rainfall, along with those gusty winds, county by county, we've got meteorologist Nash Rhodes to break it down. Yeah, I want to get into the exact impacts that you can expect beginning with Collier County first where impacts, although they will be sufficient, they're not going to be as powerful as some of the impacts they could see in counties to the north. First off, notice the storm surge between five to eight feet for our coastal communities. Naples, Lely, Marco Island impacts in Collier County will be felt especially by you first. Golden Gate, Nave, Maria and areas a little bit farther inland as you approach the Alligator Alley, Tamiami Trail regions. Uh, those impacts a little bit less. So two to five inches of rainfall is to be expected from this system. Wind gusts between 50 to 85 miles per hour. Keep an eye on that storm surge though as we progress farther to the north into Lee County, eight to 12 12 feet of storm surge is now the new forecast, and that especially goes for our island zones. If you are asked to evacuate, you need to evacuate and get out of these islands. It is going to be especially bad if these storm surge values come true for those low elevations of those islands. Flooding is also expected with wind gusts surpassing 105 miles per hour, not out of the question. The reason we've added this here is a landfall in Lee County is not out of the question. With the latest updates that we've been receiving, that eye continues continuing to wobble back and forward, bringing it closer and closer to us here in southwest Florida. Our more confidence and uh, our, our higher confidence, at least you could say, in stronger wind gusts with an eye wall approach would be just one county north into Charlotte County. 
Four to nine inches of rainfall is to be expected when gusts between 85 to 125 miles per hour possible. We could even see higher numbers than that if we did receive a landfall here in Charlotte County with storm surge still between 8 to 12 feet. A similar story as to what we saw in Lee County and also a similar story as to what we are seeing in Sarasota counties. Six to 12 inches of rain with a few spots exceeding that 12 inch mark. Some spots could see well beyond that depending on where that eye wall sets up. Otherwise, flooding wind gusts, as I mentioned, exceeding 125 miles per hour, but also that tornado threat will be possible throughout the region. Most of our counties farther south have received those tornado warnings thus far. I'd expect those warnings to start popping up farther north in counties that haven't exactly seen them yet or have only seen one or two thus far. DeSoto and Highlands counties impacts four to eight inches of rainfall possible. Expect this to be a sliding scale as you go farther west. I think we'll be closer to that eight inch total farther to the east. Those rainfall totals a little bit less. But of course, if one of those tropical bands sets up and trains over itself for a long period of time, locally we could even exceed a few of those totals. Tornadoes will be possible as far north as even Highlands counties as they are included within that tornado watch that continues into Thursday morning at 5 a.m. Notice glade in Hendry counties, three to five inches of rainfall expected a few spots with five plus inches of rain, and we've seen some stout thunderstorms actually towards the Lake Okeechobee waterfront already in that region. Those actually spinning and even producing a few tornado warnings as they have tracked to the north and west. Those warnings issued by the National Weather Service. Quick check in with Ian's Winfields. No matter where you are, tropical storm force winds will extend far away from Ian's center and also hurricane force winds at that. Notice if this were to push up towards, let's say, Sarasota and Charlotte counties, the outer fields that could produce those hurricane force winds extending one, perhaps even close to two counties inland for a short period of time, depending on the forward speed of Ian's arrival by the time it does push its way onto the coast. Otherwise, tropical storm force winds extending far to the south, even as this does make landfall to the north with the Naples area and the Lake Okeechobee area, also seeing tropical storm force winds at minimum. Uh, check in with Winks Live Doppler 3X. Many of us getting off to a wet start to this morning as we continue to see more and more of those powerful bands pushing on shore. It's only going to get worse as this is the new normal. You can see the uh, eye wall here with lots of lightning showing that it is rapidly intensifying as of the latest scans that we are seeing, but still a little bit weaker here on the southeastern flank of it. We will be watching this as it has wobbled back and forward as Casey just showed you moments ago. Farther to the north and east, one of these stronger bands on the outer edge of Ian is actually making its way through Collier County right now and lifting into Bonita Springs and Golden Gate here shortly. Ave Maria and Immokalee, you've had a little bit of a break in the action, but it is going to get windy and it is going to get rainy here very soon. And these bands are a little bit different than the rain showers you would see on a day-to-day -day basis here in southwest Florida during perhaps our rainy season. Those water droplets in our rainy season are much larger and fall much harder. Harder. This is more of a mist that only picks up in intensity as some of these bands will track through. Farther to the north and east, leaving the Lake Okeechobee waterfront, now entering into northeastern sections of Glades County and into Highlands County right now. We are seeing more and more of these isolated cells. These are the ones we have to watch for for a little bit of rotation, thanks to the maximized wind field put out by Ian. That wind field allows these storms to spin like tops if they are separated from the actual band itself. And you can see the separation with those light showers actually moving to the north while these bands are surging to the west. Uh, we call that deep deviant motion in meteorology, and that's a good indicator that some of these storms have mesocyclones, which tells us that there is some loose rotation. Now, for now, no tornado warnings on these, but if anything changes, of course, we'll let you know right here at the Wink Weather Authority. As we take a quick pan out here, just expect more and more of these bands to pick up, and they will pick up in intensity as we progress throughout the afternoon. And with those strong winds that Nash Rose was just mentioning, one of the threats to your everyday life, of course, you can lose power. The Red Cross does recommend that you can keep food safe. First, use the fridge and then the freezer. And then, of course, uh, you know, go ahead and use that thermometer just to make sure it is at a safe level. Now, one possibility, as Wink News has been telling you, Ian, it could come ashore in Venice. And, of course, that's in Sarasota County. Yeah, Wink News reporter Jennifer Titus stopped by the area's most iconic spots to check in and see how they're doing. We are here in Venice at Sharky's, literally right along the fishing pier. You can see they are ready and prepared for whatever Mother Nature throws their way. They have sandbags, 
Windows are boarded up. They, like we just mentioned, are right along the beach here in Venice. Right there is the ocean and the fishing pier. And that is what everybody is paying attention to because right now there is a storm surge estimated at eight to 12 feet. And if it was to get that high, a lot of the places along here are going to be underwater. And that's why there are mandatory evacuations in place for Sarasota County for zones A and zones B. We spoke to a GM here at this restaurant earlier today. He says they've never seen something like this in 30 years where a forecast is coming right on top of them. So they are hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. In Venice, Jennifer Titus, Wink News. And this is video of the storm surge from Hurricane Eva, uh, uh, Hurricane Ian, uh, <laughs> Ian out of Havana, Cuba. Golly, I've been saying that too much today. You can see the storm surge here. It's dark video, but my goodness, this was taken from a, a CNN reporter there in Cuba. You can see the water splashing up there over the side. My goodness. And just a few hours later, that's when that same uh, wind gust started to hit Key West. We're seeing this video. Uh, this is from uh, Gabby Orzala. She tweeted out this of Key West. Look at all that water. And you can see the wind pushing it inland just like that. The palm fronds uh, just whipping in the wind there. My goodness. And then Felicia, she sent us this video as well or posted this video on the weather. Ch uh, she is a reporter with the Weather Channel. She posted this on Twitter and a good high up view. You can see how that water again just flowing down streets, stop signs, just blowing in the wind. Again, Key West really catching some of the brunt right before we take some of that uh, here in Southwest Florida, guys. All right, Lisa, thank you. Want to go out live now. Just give you a look at how things are looking here right now. This is a look at Fisherman's Village in Punta Gorda. Uh, mm -hmm. We were seeing some strong wind gusts, as Dash said there uh, earlier this morning. You can kind of see that palm tree at the bottom of your screen. Uh, it kind of starting to breeze in the wind there, and you see, obviously, the raindrops on the screen as well. Absolutely, and the sky, mm -hmm. that is cloudy. It looks pretty ominous. We can tell it's strong enough to move that palm tree and go ahead and move those palms. And obviously a lot of boats in the water. Hopefully people took the proper precautions uh, as we now head into the final 12, 13, 14 hours as Hurricane Ian makes its way towards southwest Florida. Join now with meteorologist Nash Rhodes and Casey Sherman who've been working hard in the Weather Center for us this morning. Uh, we've been talking about evacuations uh, for uh, the last 24 hours now uh, for people here in southwest Florida. Some people may not be going. They might feel better in their home, hunkering down, feel like they're adequately prepared. What should people be doing if they haven't left now? Yeah, and not everyone was, you know, under an mm -hmm. evacuation warrant, uh, rather not mandatory evacuation order, I should say. And if you were, you know, you can stay. That's that's the reason why they issue those mandatory evacuations is because it's those areas that are going to be experiencing life-threatening storm surge. If you're inland and you decided to ride out the storm here in Southwest Florida. No, of course, you can watch us for the entire day. Mm -hmm. But also, here's some things to know to prep the inside of your home if you are now staying there, uh, which right now would be about the time to start kind of hunkering down uh, and kind of taking shelter and sheltering in place as we're going to start to see these impacts pick up. So on a take weather two, that's where we currently have this list of things you can do to prepare. One of the things you can do is fill the bathtub with water, sinks with water, and that would actually, if you do have a power outage, which is going to be fairly likely here, uh, that would help you because you can get a bucket, fill things like the toilets, the, the tanks there, and that actually helps you at least flush. I know it's not comfortable when you're without power, but that can make things at least a little more comfortable. You can use that water, water to maybe take a little bit of a bird bath there. Um, adjust the refrigerator too with that potential loss of power to the coldest setting. If you can do that before your power goes out, and that you'll have a, kind of a higher likelihood of at least the fridge staying cooler for longer and then less spoiled food. Fully charge your cell phones, of course. If you have those portable chargers, make sure those are all charged up so you can continue to use your cell phone even with that potential loss of power. And right now is the time to locate a safe space in your home. Let that be an interior room 
without windows in the try to make it more in the center portion of your house. Bathrooms are great because they have a little bit of extra support thanks to the plumbing structures there. You're going to need that a little bit later on, not just in case of a tornado, but if you are in the path that the eye wall is going to be passing through, that is going to be leading to an extended time of where you would be experiencing tornado like winds. So that's areas like Northern Lee County, Charlotte County, we're expecting that eye to pass through and into DeSoto County. Turn off major appliances to reduce chance of damage from surge. That's when you lose power, turn those appliances off. And then the generator, if you have one, great. It needs to be outside with minimum distance of 15 feet from your home, not in the garage, not in a room that's a bit farther away. It needs to be outside. We have had some pictures coming in now of viewers. This is a flooded backyard that's in Lehigh Acres. Uh, this was sent in from viewers, uh, viewer Charles Paulette Sr. You can see already that water level rising as we've seen already some very heavy bands of rain across portions of Lehigh Acres and really now for coastal portions of Collier County. And that's important to know that people are already seeing some of those effects because even though you might not be in those mandatory evacuation zone, if you are in a low lying area that typically sees flooding when we have these summer rainstorms, I mean, you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, so just because you weren't asked to evacuate doesn't mean the threat of flooding is still there. And actually just into our newsroom, Annette Montgomery saying where they're located the car was actually shaking mm -hmm. and Nash Rhodes, he has been taking a look again at this radar. It does look like a stronger band is moving on shore. Yeah, if we could pull up weather too very quickly, I do want to show you or even a live shot here uh, or either one works. <laughs> we have multiple bands moving on shore right now into coastal Collier County. You're seeing Marco Island, Everglades City, the downtown Naples area all getting a stronger band at this point in time. That same band as big as it is all the way up towards Fort Myers Beach and that's what Annette is seeing as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we want to give you a live look at what the conditions are looking like there outside at Fort Myers Beach. This is a live camera at Pierside Grill. Uh, you can see uh, that wind kind of really pushing mm -hmm. those raindrops through there. And as Belinda said, Annette just reported into our newsroom that uh, they want to find somewhere safer to stay because the car is shaking. Uh, and Nash, you had something to add to that. Yeah, and we've already seen wind gusts surpassing that 35 mile mm -hmm. per hour mark. I would expect that to continue to climb as this gets closer, but specifically with this band, we're going to be refreshing those wind gusts and seeing if we do get higher totals across Southwest Florida. All right, Nash, thank you. And let's go now to Annette Montgomery, who is live on Fort Myers Beach. She's been there for several hours now. And as we've been checking in with her, Annette, the conditions have continued to get worse. I heard in your last live shot, I could actually hear the wind as you were speaking. Yeah, Taylor, so I'm sure you can definitely hear it now. And as you said, me and my photographer did have to call it. This will be our last live shot on Fort Myers Beach because the wind is actually, it's now shaking the car. So it is becoming a threat to us. I'm going to have my photographer show you what we're seeing right now. You can see again, palm trees flowing in the wind. You can see the flag. You can see downed palm trees. Definitely the wind is now at a level where things are flying. We are seeing things flying. We are seeing our light. We have sandbags on our light, but that has been constantly shaking, moving to the point where it's fell several times and my photographer has had to pick it up. Now to give some perspective, I know you all have gone over the zones, the red zones, zone A, orange B. We are in zone A. This is Fort Myers Beach, a mandatory evacuation zone. Now this mandatory evacuation was issued around 9 a.m. yesterday. Now Liz Byro was out here and said around 10 a.m. Officials were knocking on doors trying to get people out and she saw people crossing over the bridge. Now since I've been here this morning, I've been here since 12. I've only seen two cars on this road right here. I have to hold my hat as you can see the wind. I only saw two cars on that road right there. I think maybe they were trying to last minute get out, last minute evacuate. I know Casey said, you know, around sunrise, that's when we were going to see some of the worst conditions in this area. So people really should try to evacuate. But you can see the wind right now. I don't even know if it's safe to be on the road at this time. Time. We're going to do our best, but our car is shaking. And even on our way here at midnight, um, we were hydroplaning. So I can only imagine now I'm going to have my photographer pan down to just show you the water. Now, I know we have some viewers listening in. So again, the water is not covering my rain boot at this time, but the amount of water, we are seeing a lot more water. So it's not high yet, but it's just a lot. It's a lot of water. So I can only imagine when more wind, when more rain comes in, what this area will look like. Now, I just want to give you all some few notes before I log off of Fort Myers Beach. 
One thing, we did come from Vanderbilt Beach to Fort Myers Beach. All of the gas stations we passed were boarded up, which obviously we see why the wind completely out of control, but they were boarded up, the windows and the doors, and all of the gas pumps had bags on them. So if you are trying to get gas, Fort Myers Beach, you might have to wait to get out of here because the ones we passed, all of them were closed for right now. But we will bring you updates. We won't be on Fort Myers Beach anymore, but I would definitely try to keep you all updated on what we're seeing here, and we'll definitely bring you updates on air and online. Live on Fort Myers Beach, Annette Montgomery, Wink News. And you may have been able to hear some of those wind gusts that our meteorology team just checked on, and it looks like some of those gusts have exceeded 35 miles an hour. Remember, you are recommended to not drive on bridges once it hits 40 miles an hour, even 35, you will feel it in your car. Absolutely, so they are starting to pick up out there. Our coverage on Hurricane Ian continues right after this break. This is Wink News special live coverage of Hurricane Ian. Honda SUVs and trucks give you more. Save thousands more with 1.9% financing. Get more legroom, more cargo room, more power. In stock and available with 1.9%. Search your local Honda dealer today. As hurricane specialists and first responders, Crab the Roofing knows that the only way to combat a hurricane is to be prepared. Crab the Roofing's well-trained workforce in addition to well-stocked materials and resources, along with our backup generators and gas station, enable us to take action in emergency circumstances. Do not wait for an emergency. Have Crowther Roofing assess your roof and provide low-impact solutions for high-impact weather. Go to Crowther.net. There is only one Crowther Roofing. All right, well, slow down a little bit. Check your mirrors. All of them. I'm doing that. Remember that place? It's been our share of nights there, didn't we? Mm. You know, there's something I want to ask you. Absolutely. How do I link my phone? That's what you want to... Mm. Drive. When it comes to fighting childhood cancer, we're thinking of every mile. It's your journey. When our middle son, Brandon, left to go to work, he was only 21 years old. And the last words I said to him is, I love you. And he twice deported illegal. Ran into him and hit him so hard that he caused Brandon's car to flip. And he killed him. My child's killed by someone who should not have been here. This is what happens when we have open borders. We were able to go and meet with Governor DeSantis. He said, I want to hear your son's story. And to see the compassion in his eyes. And I saw the concern. He wanted to make sure other lives were protected. And as a governor, he truly